All right. <coughs> I want to welcome everybody to the RBBS Logistics Learning Center's operational training. This is the first one that we've actually had that we're uh, broadcasting um, actually live from um, on location. We're on location here at the Sheraton Hotel, the uh, Four Points by Sheraton here in Tallahassee, Florida. And that's where we are today. Um, so uh, give you all a kind of a look at, at what we have going on here so you all can see what we do have going on, as you all can see here. Well, we've got some stuff going on, so we are live. And um, I don't know whose video this is. That's up. Okay, there we go. But someone in the background has a lot of stuff going on on their video, on their feed. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone real quick. So, as we're going to mute everyone, if you have a question, as always, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Before you unmute yourself, make sure that you have all your background noise filtered out. Make sure if you have your television sets on, radios on, anything in the background, make sure you have those turned down or turned off so that so you, so you won't have that feedback. Okay? Um, also, right, get all that out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and start sharing our screen. So everyone can see what we have here. We have a lot of people here tonight. A lot of people who have tuned in to us tonight, and that's and that's a good thing. We have a lot of new people. I think we have some um, some guests here also as well. And I want to welcome all the new people, and I want to welcome our guests. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Start sharing our screen so that everyone can see what we are seeing. All right. Hopefully everyone can see our screen now. If if you all can see our screen, just let me know by hitting me up on the little chat thing there that says, yes, I see it. And that way we'll know that everyone can see our screen. All right, great, 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 great. All right, welcome, everyone. And now, first of all, we want to go ahead and get our new people caught up to date, okay? We want to get our new people caught up to date. As everyone knows, our program, we're the only platform that actually has training and consulting, okay? We have the only earn while you learn training and consulting program in the industry right now. Everybody else has what's called freight broker training. They have a course. You pay for a course, they send you the course, or they have you attend the course, and when the course is done, that's it. You're done. Our program and our platform is the only one that actually offers ongoing training until you feel comfortable with doing this on your own. Our goal is to help each one of our students to build their own logistics firm, whether it be a freight brokerage firm or a dispatching firm or a freight forwarding firm. We're here to instruct you, to guide you, lead you, to hold your hand, so to speak, until you feel comfortable in doing this on your own. And that's true consulting. That's, that is true consulting because you all have hired us to consult with you and to show you this business, and that's what we do. And we do that by being available to you on call when you all want to call. As you know, some of you all call me at, you know, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes, <laughs> believe it or not. Yes, and I do, and, and we do get about 120 calls per day from our students uh, on average, and we try to make ourselves available to each and every, each and every one of you. Because you have questions, and when you want those questions answered, you can't call up a course, so we want you to call us up, ask us those questions. If you can't call us up, get on the, get on the chat group. Ask the questions in the chat group. If you can't find it there, get on the videos that we have on our YouTube. All of our sessions are recorded, as you see here, uh, so you, and they're recorded for you all to go back and, and, and go back over them. We don't hide anything. We show everything. So, and, uh, um, but that's why we're here. Now, with that being said, there's some new stuff that we have that's going on. First of all, let's, let's get all the new stuff out. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I know we had some problems a couple of days ago on our regular scheduled time, and we will be going back to our regular scheduled times on Saturdays at 10, 15 in the morning. So our regular scheduled training will be every Saturday at 10, 15 in the morning. 
Um, and I do apologize for the technical difficulties we had this Saturday morning at the um, courtyard by Marriott. But now we're here and everything seems to be working just great. Okay, so new website. As you all can see, this is our new website. Um, for those of you who have been with us for a while, you know our old website was kind of, um, I mean, it, it was a nice website. But it was, one of, it was a website that we built when we were brokers, when we first started out. When we started our brokers, so we were promoting RBBS. So that website had a lot to do with promoting our business, not you all's business. This new website is geared and specifically put together to for you all to self-promote yourselves, okay? It's put together to promote the National Dispatchers Network, which is technically what you all have joined. You all have joined our network of national dispatchers, okay? This is how we present you all because um, you all are not brokers. Some of you may have your brokers, um, um, may have your bond, and you may have your insurance, and you may be brokers, but we are not brokers, okay? We used to be brokers, but we are not um, anymore. We found that it's more... Uh, advantageous for us and it is less expensive and we have less overhead and we can make actually more money because we save money and without having all the liabilities so but this new format is set up to promote you all and I really like the new format um, that we have I like the website um, we, 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 we did put a lot of work into it and making sure that it reflected for you all uh, when you come to the website, it's very, it's, it looks high tech, but it's actually really, really, really simplistic. I mean, it's straightforward, to the point, really simple. Um, carriers come here, they look at it, and they see it, and it has a home page, and you see where it says, Who are we? They click on the Who are we page, they click on the Who are we, and it pretty much gives them the same look, but then they're able to stroll down, and they're able to see and read what we're all about. We're just going to go through it here real quick. Get to know us. Fast, friendly, and fully functional, our network of independent dispatchers are well-renowned throughout the United States when it comes to finding the right freight for your needs. Our team is up for every challenge with the skill and experience our clients have come to expect. We always stand behind our work with customer satisfaction being our number one priority. Contact us to learn more about our incredible network of dispatchers and how they can help you. As you can see, everything is about you all and how you all can help the carriers um, with finding freight and meeting their specific needs. Now, you notice here that we're trying to establish ourselves as a different type of network of um, freight agents and dispatchers, okay, because we want... We want the carriers, when they come to us, we want them to feel like, okay, Denise Williams says she can't hear anything. Uh, Denise, I don't know why you can't hear anything. Can everyone else hear me? If everyone else can hear me, click yes. If those who can hear me, um, type in yes, and those who can't, just type in no. Okay, Kate can hear me. Um, Denise, I think you have something wrong with your mic. Your, it must be your headset, um, Denise. So, um Okay, uh, I'm going to ask Denise. Um, Denise, it must be your headset. Um, I don't know what's going on with your headset, Denise, but uh, check your headset. Let me see here. I'm going to type to her. She can't hear us. Check your headset. Let me type this to Denise here real quick. Make sure she can hear me. I apologize, everyone else. Give me, let me get it over to, over to Denise. Okay. All right. Hey, can you hear me now? I'm conversating with Denise real quick here, to, trying to get her uh, situated. Okay. All right. Hopefully she can hear me. Um, hopefully she get that straightened out. If you can't, if if you can't, um, you may uh, you may need to hit the phone, or you know, or or you may need to dial us up and or click the phone button 
If you click the phone button, um, Denise, you should be able to hear us. All right. Um, click the phone button. Boy, I love technology. Okay. But anyway, let's get back to what we were doing so we can get back on everyone else. All right. Okay. Now, um, hopefully she can get that straightened out. But as you can see, we're, we're, back to what we were doing, okay, we're trying to establish this network. We're trying to establish each and every one, one of you all as being able to do business differently than other freight dispatchers and other logistics professionals are doing business. Because everyone else out there is basically just trying to book loads, you know, just whatever loads that they're trying to book. We're want the, we want the carriers to understand that we know we know that not every carrier, not every truck can move freight for the same price because some drivers have lower truck payments, they have lower expenses. Some drivers have higher overhead, much higher overhead. You have some drivers out there, carriers out there who, 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 who did really well on negotiating their truck finance. You know, uh, when I was um, driving the truck, you know, I got my truck on a business loan. I did a revolving line of, <laughs> revolving line of credit. I went in and, and gave them my executive summary. I gave the bank my executive summary. I had like seven or eight contracts, um, um, conditional and contingent contracts that I got from shippers showing what they would be paying me if I had my own truck and what they would pay me um, for the runs and stuff. So I presented that to my bank along with my executive summary and things like that and was able to get a revolving line of credit um, for $225,000 to go out and buy me a truck. And in doing that, my payments, I went in and bought a brand new truck, even though it was a hundred thousand dollar truck. My payments on it each month, I was just paying the interest on the revolving debt. So my payment on it each month was only like three hundred and eighty dollars per month, believe it or not, because I wasn't paying off the truck. I was just paying the interest payment, the interest only payment on the truck, and it was on and it wasn't actually on the truck. It was on the revolving line of credit. So essentially, when I bought the truck, I had the title to it. All I was paying was just on a revolving line of debt, on a revolving line of credit. So I could afford to run loads at a, you know, eighty cents per mile and still make money, a dollar per mile, a dollar twenty a mile, and still make money. So I didn't have any restrictions on what loads that I could run because all freight was good freight to me because I didn't have the overhead. And there are some carriers out there that that are good at knowing that, and they did that, and they got their trucks at a low, low, low price. Either their truck is paid for, or they got a used truck and they'll have a higher payment, or they did just like I did and got a business loan and went out and bought their trucks that way because this is a business. And in doing that, they can run their trucks for a lot less CPM cents per mile then someone who, say, went to a leasing company or went to one of these truck finance companies, and they have a $700 a week payment. So you see the difference there between three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month and $700 a week. So that obviously the, the carrier that has that $700 a week payment, there is no way that he can run a load for less than what? $2 per mile. He's got to have a minimum of $2 per mile just to, just to, to, to make any type of profit. Okay. So we want them, we want the carriers to understand that, know that we understand this, that we understand that not every carrier can move loads for the same cents per mile. So we cater our search to their pricing needs, to their load pricing needs. And by driving this concept, by always reinforcing that concept, it should separate you all us and you all from other dispatch firms, from other brokerage firms, from other people in the business who are just trying to put them on whatever load that they can get them on. And like anything else, you have to brand yourself. You have to brand this. You have to put this message out. You have to put it on social media, put it on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook, put it on all the trucking. Make sure you hammer that message every day. You have to hammer that message out there so that so when people think about your business, they they think oh well oh yeah those are the guys that go out and get me the loads that I need instead of just go out and find me a load and believe it or not if you're branding this right it is going to bring you more business people will start to seek you out and you won't have to actually go out and try to find 
carriers to run those for people will be calling you up on the phone voluntarily say hey I heard that you all find it on um, those that kind of match what I need or if I you know you all specify your load search to what I need to move my truck and when that catches on when you, if you brand your business right and that catches on you won't have any trouble you never have trouble making money because people will seek you out and they'll open up their pockets and they'll be and, and these carriers will willingly pay you that ten percent because you're getting them the loads that they need and the loads that they want. Okay? Now with that being said, this website goes to helping you to do that. Further on the website it says our areas of ser service. Meeting your needs. RBBS is a logistics freight dispatching firm built by owner operators for owner operators. So we understand every carrier is unique in their low pricing needs. Our dispatch agents will cater their load search to your pricing requirements. And we have a nice little video here and stuff that kind of, you know, shows, you know, they, you know, they, you know it's, it's a nice little dreamy video. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but go to YouTube and look it up and you will be able to see it there and everything. And it's got a nice music behind it and stuff and kind of like a dreamy music, you know, um, but that's part of branding. Okay, uh, okay I'm gonna sit that, and then it goes on to tell the owner operators, "We are always here for you. We're always here for you." That's a dispatch agreement. They can click on it, and it will pull up the dispatch agreement. All they gotta do is click on it, and it pulls it right up. Now we're gonna be changing this dispatch agreement to the new dispatch agreement. This is the one. This it, this is the new dispatch agreement, but we're gonna change it to the new format, to where it all of this is blank. We have a new one where all of this is blank, and all you all have to do. And all you all have to do is go in and plug in your name and your information and stuff like that, and you'll be able to um, get that over to them, and you can send them directly there and do that. We have it like this right now because, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was the one that was already loaded up in. Then there's another video that kind of goes into, here again, different dreamy music. Let them know that we support the own operators and that our agents are – always working um, for them so as you can see here we have these types of um, promotional videos and for you all to share and help brand yourself so um, if you get a chance go to the website take a look at it by yourself they're really really nice very well done all right and down here as you all can see RBBS uh, transport LLC's national network of dispatches this is you all every last one of you all will have your listing placed here onto our website. Okay, so when they need to get in contact with you all, they can go ahead and click on and call your extension and know how to contact you directly. If you are new, you will be on here by tomorrow. By close of business tomorrow, we will have all the new people on here. Make sure that if you are new, if you are new, and if you go to this website you, and if you do not see your name and see your extension on here, get in contact with us. Shoot us an email at dispatch at rbbstransport.com. Again, shoot us an email to dispatch at rbbstransport.com. And when you shoot that email over, make sure you put in, send us, title it, um, my profile, my um, national network's profile, and put your full legal name, your company name, if you pick one out already. If you don't, don't worry about it. Your phone number, you want your toll-free extensions forward it to an email address you want your e-fax your faxes faxed over um, sent to and your um, where well, you want your dedicated email sent to and we need also the city and state you operate out of so again send over to dispatch at rbbstransport.com your full name your company name your phone number that you want your calls forwarded to, the email address you want your faxes and your dedicated emails forwarded to, and the city and state you operate out of. Okay? All right. Uh, and, of course, we have a, one of our um, – uh, some, someone who used our service left us a nice little um, 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 comment and, recommend, and recommendation, which is always good to get from um, people. And we have where people can know where we are if they need to locate us, call us up, anything like that. All right. So as you can see, the website is very straightforward. It's simple. It's it 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 looks great. 
but it is a simple, straightforward website. All right. Now, let's get on with the good stuff. Okay? Let's get on with the good stuff and, and make it money. All right? It's coming. CentralDispatch.com. Auto hauling. This year, we are going to be training and, and showing you all how to do auto hauling. Auto hauling is, without a doubt, the number one money maker in this industry. I'm going to say, that's, I'm going to say this again because I want you all to understand something. Auto hauling is the number one money making stream of revenue for this type of industry. Simply because of the way it's set up and how it and, and how it works. Because auto haulers are paid, and you all will be paid per car, not per load. But it is going to require you all to be really, really, really on top of your game when it comes to negotiating, because you are dealing with used car dealers. And believe me when I tell you, these used car salesmen. They will eat you alive. They will chew up your mama, your grandmama, and your great great grandmama. And I mean, they will look. <laughs> they will chew you up so bad, your great grandchildren will have teeth marks on their butt. This is how good they are at negotiating. This is how they how good they are at just eating you alive if you're not on top of your negotiating skills. Now I'm telling you this. I can talk about them because I used to be a car salesman. I was in the car business for almost ten years. Okay, I sold cars. I was a um, I, I was a general manager of a dealership. I was a um, a special finance manager at the Mercedes dealership here in Tallahassee years ago. Okay, so I'm telling you from what I know, these these auto salesmen, these car dealers, they will eat you alive if you're not on top of your game. So when we break into this, which is going to be here in the next couple of weeks, uh, we are still waiting for our approval to get on to CentralDispatch.com. Um, we submitted it, I believe it was last Thursday or Friday, but we had this holiday weekend. So what we're, we're looking at is, I think they said it was 7 to 12 days, something like that, before we could get approved. But weekends and holidays don't count. So hopefully we'll be able to get on there probably this coming week or maybe, or maybe next week. So I'm hoping that we can get on there this coming week or, or next week. Warning, warning, central dispatch does not play, okay? They have certain rules, regulations, and guidelines that they operate by. If you do not follow these rules, if you step outside of the boundaries of their rules and their, and their guidelines, they will kick you off and they will ban us. They won't ask any questions. You will just, we'll just get a notice that your account has been banned, and they won't even explain why. That's how they operate. So I'm telling you all right now, once we get access to this site and we tell you all how you need to be operating on it, stick to that. Don't go in here, you know, being a Rambo, making things up, you know, um, you know, getting into, you know, um, 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 don't get into any type of negative conversations or negative, you know, back and forth with any of the other members of this um of this um, 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 um of this load board, um, you know, uh, we should we should never have any problems because the way we're going to be set up is with the way we are going to be set up is every load that we that we have on here will be COD, which means the carrier gets paid at the drop, okay, um, cash on delivery, cash at the drop, carrier gets paid on the carrier paid on, at the drop. So when uh, so when we work out our deals with the used car dealers to pick up their load from the auction and have them delivered to their car dealership, when those carriers get to that car dealership, that used car dealer, the owner of that dealership, used car dealer, we have a check there ready for that carrier for their cut. Okay, so the carrier is going to get their half. Let's say if we got a uh, ten cars that need to be moved up, and we've negotiated with the dealership. For four hundred dollars a car, and we tell the carrier we're paying them one seventy five or two hundred dollars a car. So we're paying the carrier two hundred dollars a car, and we're and we're and we even negotiate with the dealership where we get four hundred dollars a car. So when that carrier gets to the dealership with those ten cars, that carrier is going to get a check for two thousand dollars because he's getting what two hundred dollars a car, ten cars, two thousand dollars. 
So they're going to cut that carrier check for $2,000. That's his pay. Okay? He's gone. We're going to send that dealer an invoice, an electronic invoice, through our Cash Me app. Okay? And when they get the electronic invoice, they're going to click on it, and they're going to pay us with a debit credit card our $2,000. And then when we get that into our cash me account, we're going to take $1,000 of that, and we're going to send that over to you, the dispatcher who booked that load, because you get half of our what? Dispatching fee. Our dispatching fee is 10% of the load, but in this case, our dispatching fee is, is basically half of whatever, whatever we negotiate. So it's not really 10% anymore, but you all still get 50% of our dispatcher's fee. So our dispatcher's fee in this case, which turned out to be two thousand dollars, which means you get a thousand and we get a thousand, and that's on one load, and that's and that's about your average load when it comes to auto hauler. Because when we move these cars for these car dealerships, you're not looking at them moving one car or two cars. They have enough to go to the auction to pick up fleets of cars. Okay, uh, they may be moving. They may have two or three loads per week that they need moved up. And each load may have, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12 cars. Or they may have one big load that's coming up where they've got 20-some cars that they bought at the auction, and so they're going to need two or, three, two or three runs. And nine times out of ten, these are not long runs. These are not runs across the country. These are runs less than 300 miles because car dealerships don't – if you're in Florida, you don't go to California to purchase your cars. No. You go to the auction in Fort Lauderdale. Orlando, Jacksonville, in that area, and purchase your cars. And then you have them brought up from there to Tallahassee, which is only about 280 miles. You see what I'm saying? So, or if you're going to Jacksonville or whatever, it's only like 104 miles. So you're not running cars clear across country. You're running short runs. And for a carrier to be getting paid $150 a car, and they've got 15 cars, or getting paid $200 a car, and they've got 10 cars just to run what? A couple hundred miles, that's where the money's at. That's where the money's at. So that's why we, in turn, will be showing you all how to negotiate with these car dealerships and negotiating with them for us to get somewhere between, you know, and depends on how quick they need the car. If a car dealership tells you that they need their cars here by tomorrow, the day is Monday, you call them on Monday, the car dealership says, look, I got to have my cars here by Wednesday. I got to have him got to have him here by Wednesday. If they tell you they got to have him here by Wednesday, that means what? You know immediately you can go up on your you can start your your negotiating price uh, per car high. You can go high. Why? Because it's time sensitive. That car needs to get there. The cars can't sit there at the auction waiting on somebody to come pick it up. Because the way this works is when we put it on central dispatch and it's going to have central dispatch it's going to tell you what the lane rates are, what the average rate is for cars coming from there going to wherever you are sending them to. So if you've got 20 cars that need to come from um, Fort Lauderdale, and Fort Lauderdale is 210 miles away, and the car dealership tells you I need my cars here by Wednesday, and it's Monday, that means and it's going to show you that those lanes are paying somewhere in the neighborhood uh, for runs like that. The cars um, carriers used to get 175 to $200 a car. Okay, so you can immediately hit the car dealership with, okay, and uh, I can guarantee you that I get those cars here for you uh, by Wednesday. You know, if if I can get four hundred fifty dollars a car, you're gonna hit it. You're gonna go high. You're gonna go high because he needs those cars right away. Why? Because if he puts them on there at the one seventy five or two hundred dollars a car, they got a whole bunch of loads on there that's paying that. So what's the incentive for the carrier to grab his cars right now? You see what I'm saying? He needs his cars fast. But you got a thousand loads on there that's coming from the auction in Fort Lauderdale that's paying what? One seventy five, two hundred dollars a car. So what's the incentive for a carrier to pick his out and say, Okay, well, I'm gonna grab these I'm gonna grab these loads here first. The incentive is a higher than average fee for that lane. And that's what causes the carriers to grab that deal first and say, okay, I'll take that load. So if you are looking at the load board on Central Dispatch and you see where it says the average rate for this area is 150 a car, then you're going to go in there and put 185. You're going to, you're going to bump it up a little bit, or you're going to put 190 or 200. Why? Because you got from the car dealership, what, 450 per car. 
So if you go in there and you put you go up another twenty five or fifty dollars higher than the average rate. So when everyone else is looking at the rates that are saying one seventy five, one fifty, one seventy five, and they see yours that says one ninety five and it's fifteen cars or twenty cars, guess what? You're gonna have a bunch of carriers saying, I'll take that load right now. And that guarantees that that car dealership gets his loads quickly. Now, if he says, well, that's kind of expensive, I understand, but you need your, you need your cars now. I mean, I can, I can drop it down to 300 but you may not get your cars until Friday. So I can guarantee you'll get them on Wednesday with 450 a car, or, you know, we may get them to you by Friday <coughs> at $300 a car. Which one you, and which one's best for you? This is how you have to be with these car dealerships. Now, uh, just doing a mic check. Can everyone hear me okay? If you can hear me okay, give me a quick yes on the text thing there. Yes, I got you. Yes, I hear you. Whatever case may be, you want to do a quick mic check. All right, great, great, great. Everybody chiming in saying yes, that's good, that's good, that's good. I uh, like that. All right. So, but this is how you operate on these on, um, with these car dealerships. You have to be up on your negotiating skills. You have to be steadfast with them. And you have to get them to come off the money to get those cars moved. And it depends on how quick they need their cars. It's going to determine how much you're going to hit them with up front on the per car rate. Okay? Any questions on how on the car dealership thing? We, we don't want to get too much into it right now because we don't have access um, to the load board yet. But are there any questions on the on on the um, on the um, on the auto hauling? Before we move on, real quick, we're going to get more into this next week when we get access to the low board. Once we get access to the low board, there's a whole lot of stuff that I have to show you all, and we'll show you all on how to get on there, how to log in, um, how to negotiate with the you know carriers, how to pull up the car dealerships, and all that type of stuff. But any questions on that? All right, real quick, since we were talking about cars, uh, real quick, a lot of you are probably saying, okay, now how do we how do we actually get these uh, contracts with the car with the car dealers? Okay, well this is how we are going to be going to. Have you ever heard of a little known website called Google? <laughs> okay, yeah, there's, there's something out there. There's, there's a little something out there called a search engine. It's called Google, and just so happens it's free. But you got, we're going to go to Google, as you often see here, and we're going to put in use car dealers and we're going to put in those in Alabama now as you all know I'm in Tallahassee but I'm going to show you the magic of Google you can be anywhere in the world and book cars and negotiate with car dealerships from any other place in the world and you can facilitate this and run this and have cars picked up and delivered at their auction and delivered to their the dealership all day, every day long, and you don't even have to be anywhere near that car dealership. So there is lit literally an unlimited, an unlimited source of business for you to contact car dealerships. Because you go to Google, you put in used car dealerships, you put it in a city and a state, and look what happens. You see right here? And we all, and look, don't call new car dealerships because you're wasting your time. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you call new car dealerships, you're wasting your time. They are not going to deal with you because new car dealerships, it has to go through their corporate office. Corporate has to decide what carriers that they're going to approve to move their freight. And 99.999% of the time, if you're dealing with new car dealerships, they've already got their approved carriers, and they're not going to go outside of the approved carriers that they have because if you're dealing with a car dealership, they're going to say, well, we've got to contact corporate, and that's the last time you're ever going to hear from it. You're never going to get anything back from it. They're never going to get you signed up. They're never going to have you to move any of their freight. So don't waste your time with new car dealerships. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, yeah, but what about those Mercedes? Look, you ain't got the Mercedes type of name. You ain't got the Mercedes type of clout to move those cars. So don't bother. Don't waste your time. They're never going to use you, okay? Never. It's not going to happen, okay? So don't waste your time. Stick with the used car dealership. Why? Because there's a used car dealership on every corner. You can pick up a handful of rocks right now from wherever you all are at and throw it out your window and probably hit five, ten used car dealerships because they're on every corner in every state and every city in the United States. And here we're about to prove this. But you're going to go here. You're going to find used car dealers in you know, Bum Rock, Mississippi, if that's what you want to look for. 
but it's going to pull up used car dealerships. And you're going to click here where it says more places. When you click more places, watch what happens. It gives you an itemized list of all the used car dealerships in Dothan, Alabama, or whatever area you're thinking. You've got five, six, a continuous stream of used car dealerships down here. Look here. What it also does is not only does it give you the stream, but it tells you what time they open in the morning or what, how, how late they open, if they open right now. It gives you the phone number and tells you, and you can have the map. You can click on it tell you exactly where they are. All you're going to do, and this is how I recommend you do this. Here's how I recommend you do this. If you're going to be attacking the car, if you, well, I don't want to say attacking. If you're going to be concentrating or targeting the car dealerships, okay, used car dealerships, have you a set area of where you want to operate, okay? If you like Dothan, Alabama, if you like Atlanta, Georgia, if you like, now, now I'm going to give you all a little bit of advice. The bigger cities are not the best cities to go after. Because the bigger cities, they have a ton of options available to them for transporting their cars from the, uh, what you call it, to their location. Target those smaller cities, like a, like, like a Dothan, Alabama, like, a, um, like a, um, 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 an Ozark, um, Alabama, like a Quincy, Florida, or like a Havana, Florida, or like a, you know, some of those smaller cities. Don't go for the big name brand cities. Don't go for a Miami. Don't go for an Atlanta. Don't go for a New York City. Don't go for a Los Angeles. Don't go for a Houston, Texas, or Dallas, Texas, or anything like that. Hit those little small towns and cities around those big cities because they don't have as many options as those bigger cities have as to getting freight, getting people to go pick up cars for them. So obviously that's why you want to call the smaller cities. But you call the smaller cities and they got a ton of cars that use car dealerships in those smaller cities. And they need their car and move to the dealership just like everybody else do. They go to they go to the auction just like everyone else do. But they don't have as many people clamming for their business. So you want to hit an area that does not have a whole lot of competition for you. You want to hit those areas where you're probably the only game in town, or you're one of the few games in town, or they don't normally get calls from people like you. You understand what I'm saying? Because this is going to be target rich for you. All right. So. You're going to call up one of these car dealerships, and what you're going to do is you're going to pick an area. Let's say you pick, let's say you pick three areas. Let's say you pick Dothan, Alabama. Let's say you pick Quincy, Florida. And let's say you pick, um, um, you know, um, 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 Clarenceburg, Mississippi, or whatever the case may be. All right? You pick those three areas. Let's say on Monday you call all the car dealerships in Dothan, Alabama. On Tuesday you call all the car dealerships in Havana or Quincy, Florida. And then on Wednesday – you call all the car dealerships in, what you call it, and then on Thursday, you go back to Dothan, Alabama. On Friday, you go back to what you call it. Then on Saturday, you go back to what you call it. You see what I'm saying? Because here's what you're going to do. On Monday, you're going to start calling these car dealerships. You're going to go right down the list. You're going to call up CarMax. You're going to call up the Toyota of Dothan. You're going to call up um, Solomon um, Chevrolet. You're just going to go down the list. You're going to call them up. You're going to say, hey, uh, such and such over at CarMax, this is such and such, and such with auto uh, dispatch or whatever this is this. And I was trying to see if you all, and we specialize in moving cars from the auctions and and, and, and the auto hauler. I was trying to see if you all had any, any cars that you all need to pick up that we can move for you. Now, if they say uh, no, if they say, uh, well, we already got someone who's kind of uh, doing that for us, or it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they say, okay? That's not what you're doing here. You're not trying to get them. You are, but you're not really looking for them to say, okay, oh, yeah, I got a bunch of cars that I want you to move right now. That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is to get on a regiment of calling them and get your name recognition so they recognize you and your name. So you're going to make that call to him at 7 a.m. in the morning or whenever they open up, 8 a.m. in the morning, and you're going to call him up, and, you're gonna, and, and every Monday and Thursday, you're going to call him up at the same time every Monday and Thursday. On them Thursday, because when he gets on the phone, he says, "Well, we already got somebody that moves cars for us." You're gonna immediately end that conversation. You're gonna immediately go right to, "Okay, great, no problem. Uh, we just give you a call back on some other time, and and maybe you have some for us then." Um, thanks again. Bye. Get off the phone. Go right to the next one. Do the exact same thing. If he says, "Well, you know, we don't really have anything that needs to move right now," okay, no problem. Great. We're gonna give you a call back on uh, sometime 
I'm going to go read and see if you got anything on for again. Okay, thanks. Bye. And you're going to go to the next one. You're going to do that same thing over and over and over and over again. Now, there's a good chance you may run into somebody and say, you know what? We do got a bunch of cars up there in um, in uh, Ozark, I'm in Alabama, that we need to move down. Okay? If, if that happens, great. If it doesn't happen, still great. No problem. We're going to give you a call back uh, later on in the week and see if you got anything for us then. Thanks again. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Get off the phone with them. Now, on Tuesday, you're going to call your next list. Do the exact same thing. On Wednesday, you're going to call your next the area, the car dealers in Mississippi. Do the exact same thing. On Thursday, you're going to go back to the Dothan list. Call the same guys at the same time. Around about the same time, you're going to start calling them Thursday morning. You're going to start calling them. Go down that list. And then on Friday, you're going to call what? The Havana, Florida. And then on Saturday, you're going to call what? The, the, the Mississippi guys. Because here's what's going to happen. After about the second week, okay, second or third week, they're going to start saying, well, you know what? You know what? Man, that dog on Regina Chun, she calls here every Monday at 9 or 15, every Thursday at 9 or 15. Like clockwork. I mean, I mean, I mean, she. Every, I'm talking about every every Monday and Thursday. They can. I mean, they, they, they get to the point where they're expecting that call from Regina. And pretty soon, two things are going to happen. They're going to either say, "When you one day Regina's going to call them up, and and they're going to say, you know what, Regina, here, I, I got a bunch of low, I got a bunch of cars for you, just you know, to, because because you call here so much, and we feel like we owe you something." <laughs> Or they may be in a situation, they may find themselves in a situation where they have what? Some cars that are stuck at a dealership somewhere or cars that are stuck at an auction somewhere, and their regular guy or their regular carrier can't move them. And if their regular carrier can't move them, who is the first person they're going to think about? The person that's been calling them every what? Monday and Thursday or every what? Tuesdays or every, yeah, Mondays and Thursdays or every Tuesdays and Saturdays. You see what I'm saying? Because, and that's how you get in with them. So you're either going to run up on new business right away, or you're going to bug them so much over time until they just say, look, here, here you go. Or when they do have something, they're going to say, they're going to call you up and say, hey, you know, uh, you know like, like, you've been calling us for the last three weeks, every Monday and, and Thursday, like clockwork, but um, we got some cars that stuck in the witch car, and I, and I need to get them here, like, right away. How quickly can you get them to? Because I need to have them here uh, day after uh, tomorrow. And that's when you're going to go into your what? Your high number pitch with them. Time sensitive. Remember, time sensitive. If the cars are time sensitive, you're going to look up all the central dispatch, see what the rates are for that area. If the rates say 175, you know you've got to bump it up to around 200, 200, 215. So you're going to hit him with what? 450, 475 a car. Now, he's going to balk at that and say, man, that's kind of high. Yeah, but it, it, it's high because you need your cars right away. If you want your cars, it's Monday. If you want your cars here by Wednesday, I can guarantee you I have them here by Wednesday at 450 car. Or we can take a chance and maybe get them to you by Friday at $300 a car. Choice is yours. This is how you're going to have to negotiate with these car dealerships in doing the auto hauling. But I promise you, I promise you, it is the most money you're ever making this business. Okay? Any questions on that real quick before we move on to the low boards? We're going to get into, get into some low board training here and show these new people how to get on the low boards. We're going to go over some low board training and show you all how to, how to, what you all need to concentrate on to make money right now. Because I've been watching some stuff going on on the you know chat groups and stuff, and people uh, have been saying they need this and they want to know how to do this, and 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 uh, some some of you all have been saying, well, you know, some of you all haven't really gotten into the groove, but I got some other people who are into the groove. And they're booking freight every day, like Mr. Richard uh, Stevens, Mr. Tony Davis, uh, people like that. They booking because they following the program. They working the system. And trust me, if you work the system, the system will work for you. But if you insist on not working the system, the system is not going to work for you. I can promise you that. All right. Any questions on the auto hauling before we get on to showing you all how to, how to work this system? Any, any questions? Anybody? Anybody? 
When my jeopardy clock is ticking. Dun 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 dun. All right. No questions on auto hauling. All right. Cool. All right. Let's get out of the Google. Let's go over to get off the uh, website. Let's go over to one two three low board. All right. New people, specifically new people. All right. Tomorrow or tonight, sometime or another, you all will start receiving your um, logins for the low boards. We're going to get you logins to one through three, get you logins to Truckers Path, we're going to get you logins to All Free Connect. And when we get up and running on Central Dispatch, everyone is going to get their logins to Central Dispatch. These are the low boards that we pay for and that you get your logins from, from us. So we'll be sending you your logins. All new people will receive their usernames and logins to log into the low boards. But when you log into the load board, this is what you're gonna here is what you're gonna be looking at. When you log into one to three load board, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Okay? Um ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. this is what you're gonna be looking at when you log into the load board. This is the first thing you're gonna uh, see when you log well, matter of fact, let's log out off so this so everyone can see how to we wanna show them how to actually get on. So let's log off. My bad. Let's log off. Let's log out. All right, let's log out and then we'll log back in so we'll show you how to get to 123. When you, when you, when you put in 123lowboard.com, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this. When you see this, you're going to go up here up here to the top right. It says sign in. You're going to click the sign in, then you're going to log in. Okay? We're not going to show you the password because we don't want everybody knowing our password. But you're going to sign in. Then you're going to come here to this page right here. All right, you're going to see load search. You're going to see quick pain. You're going to see truck locator. This is the system. Now, Please, new people, old people, people who have been with the system, people who are working the system, people who are not working the system. I want everyone to understand. I want everyone to hear me. I want everyone to hear me clearly. If you work this system, I promise you, I promise you, this system will pay off for you. When I, and I said this before and I'll say this again. When I first started doing this two and a half years ago, when I first jumped into this, and I was doing it as a broker, and well, actually, when I first started, I was doing it as a dispatch before I got my broker's license, be uh, be before I got my bond, and before I went out and got people to back me and do this type of stuff. But when I first started doing it, all I had was one, two, three low board. This is the only low board I had. I didn't have a bunch of loads like we have now that we posted here for you all. I had maybe, um, and I can exactly what I was doing. I was going to a, another low board. Or I called up a couple of brokers and got them to send me, like, you know, something from their private load board, and I posted, like, maybe eight, nine loads onto one, two, three load board, okay? And I posted those loads on here not because I wanted to book those loads. I posted them on here so I can have access to the trucks, to the carriers, because I knew if I got access to the carriers, then I'm a good enough salesman where I can flip those carriers over to a dispatch agreement, get them to sign a dispatch agreement, then I go find them what they want. People, when I tell you I was booking 10 to 12 loads a day, working this system, but I, but I can promise you, I can promise you, you ain't going to book two loads a week if you don't work the system. If you work the system, the system will work for you. But it's not going to work for you if you don't work the system. And a lot of you are hard-headed. I'm just telling you like it is. You new people, you understand something about me. I don't pull punches. I'm here to show you all how to help. I'm here to help you build your business. And I can't do that by being nice and just pulling punches and always, you know, trying to shelter you from everything. I'm going to tell you like it is, okay? I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm always going to give it to you straight. I'm always going to tell you like it is. And I'm gonna, I'm always trying to tell you stuff that's going to protect you, all right? If you go to this... If you work this system, you will make money. If you do not work the system, you won't make money. We got some people that are hard-headed. They insist on doing things their way. Okay, fine. Do things your way. But if you, you might want to take the advice of someone <laughs> who is making money. You might want to take the advice of someone who has done this and did well at it and was doing well at it. If you want me to prove that to you again, I will. Some of you have been with us long enough to remember um, a few months back, I took, what, three days off just to book freight to show you how easy it is. And in them three days, I think I booked somewhere between 13 and 18 loads, okay, doing this system. And out of those 13, 18 loads under um, that book, I think it was like, 
I can't remember right off. I think it was like 16 or 17 loads. It was somewhere in between there. But out of those loads that I booked, only two of them, only two of them came from our direct ship. So all the rest of them came from the load boards and following the system. And the system works. But if, it ain't going to work if you don't if, 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 if you don't work the system. Okay? All right. And this is the system. When you come here, you're going to go to where it says truck locator. When you go to truck locator, you're going to notice here it is going to pull up all of the loads that we have posted on, on, uh, on 1, 2, 3. Now, fortunately enough, we have a whole bunch of bait loads for you all. This is not the days when I only had eight or nine loads. We put, on average, 40 to 100 loads on these load boards every day. These are loads that we get from a shipper that we uh, um, uh, got to send us loads or brokers that send us loads or someone that sends us loads every day. And we post them on 123, uh, Truckers Path, and other load boards. Not necessarily to spoon feed you all loads to, so you can get paid on spoon, on spoon feeding your loads because that's not what you're here. You're here to learn how to build your own business. You're here to learn how to develop your own way of adding and building your load. All right, uh, Tasha sent me a thing. So if you have a passion for this, can I at least do two a day? You can definitely do two a day. You can do two a day with your eyes closed if you follow the system as you're about to see. Okay? Now, this is the system. You're going to go here. You're going to immediately see the loads that we, that we post. We've got 67 loads posted on here on today. 67 loads. That's a lot of loads. And I'm going to show you how that 67 loads is probably going to give you access to a, probably close to 1,000 trucks, to 1,000 carriers that are empty, that are looking for loads. Okay? I'm, I'm going to show you that. You notice that these are all our loads. Okay? It, it tells you, you know, where they're picking up, where they're going. If you want to see the rates on these loads, go and pull up the rate sheets that we send you all every single day. We send you all rate sheets every day. We send you the load sheets every day, and the load sheets that we send you all is our daily load list. Uh, let's find the one for today. We're going to find the ones for today. Uh, our BBS loads, here we go, documents. Here we go. Here's the one for today. And this is the daily load list. We send you all this every day. Every day we send you all our daily load list. This is your daily load list, and this one has the prices. This has the rates on it and everything. And everything. Like this is our daily load. This is, this is where those 67 loads came from. We, hit, we sent out 70 of them this morning. Okay? So uh, we send those out to you every day. Every day you all get this load list. New people, you will start getting them from here on out. Once we get you all in the system, you all will be in the system after today. But this is your daily load sheet. All right? So what we have here. Ba, 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 ba. Let's get back over to the oh, oh, here we go. All right, so you're gonna click on the first one. Click on the first one. Now you notice over here to the right what happens? It pulls up this little um, like a little map of trucks and stuff. You got a radius here. You read this and say this is on a 75 mile radius. What these are are empty trucks, flatbed trucks. So these are flatbed loads. The trucks over here are always gonna match the loads that we have, because this is going to match up trucks that are empty, that are within the 75-mile radius, or you can change the radius. You can make it smaller, 50, 25 miles, or you can make it larger, 125 miles. We keep it at around about 75 miles. This is pulling up all the trucks that are empty around that load within a 75-mile radius. And notice what happens when you click on the truck. It tells you the name of the carrier. DOT or MC number, and it gives you that phone number. Now, seven times out of ten, that phone number is to the truck driver. Occasionally, it's to their dispatcher or to their or to their you know, whoever is is under the call for. But seven times out of ten, it's to the it's 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 to the truck driver. So basically, what you all all you're gonna do is this: you're gonna call that guy up. You're gonna call him up. You're gonna say, "Hey, how you doing?" My name is such and such and such. I'm gonna say my name is my name is um, Joseph Derrick, and I'm with Joseph Derrick Dispatch. Okay, I noticed that you have a um, you're located right here in close to Chapman, Alabama. Just what happens? We have a load 
that's picking up less than 20 miles from you on tomorrow and is going to Montgomery, Illinois. And it's paying, and you're going to go down here and you're going to pull up what it's paying. And you're going to tell them, and it's paying $1,700, and it's going 786 miles. And you get 85% of that 1700 It is lumber. It is 48,000 pounds. It requires six foot of tarp. Is that something you might want? Now, we know it's lumber because all these loads are lumber. We know it's 48,000 pounds because they're all full loads, 48,000 pounds. We know it's six-foot tarp because our note section over here doesn't have anything on it, and if it doesn't have anything in the note section that says anything different, it's always going to be six-foot tarp. Okay? If it's something different, it would tell you it's something different over here in the note section, like here where it says eight tarps, new rate, or where it says no tarp. If it does not have something different over here, if this is blank, it is always six foot tarp, and they're all 48,000 pounds. And it's all lumber unless it tells you it's not lumber or it tells you it's something else or it tells you that our tarp is different than the, six foot, than the regular six foot tarp. Okay? All right. So you're going to take, you're going to give him the load, you're going to give him the price, you're going to say, all right, this is what it is, and do you want it? Would you like to run that load? Now, it is a, it doesn't matter what he says. If he says yes, no, maybe so, you know, kiss my blank, 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 I don't deal with y'all, I don't like brokers, I don't like nobody, you know, mad, uh, just leave me alone. <laughs> it doesn't matter what he says. And I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter what he says. If he says yes, I want that load, then great. Then you're going to call us, you're going to call me, you're going to call us, you're going to call the main line to RBBS. We're going to contact the shipper, and we're going to see if that load is still available. If that load is available, great. We're going to go ahead and book him on it, get us insurance information, send it over to the shipper, and let him run that load all, all, all fine and dandy. Now, okay, if he says no, and no matter what he does, we'll, and if he says yes, we're also going to, you all are going to send him his dispatch agreement, get him to sign it, send it back over to us, that type of thing. All right? If he says no, I don't want that load. Okay, your next question, your next thing out of your mouth is going to be, no problem, I'm going to ask you a question. How much money do you need to run a load? Now, I, I guarantee you, he doesn't get asked that question a whole lot. Okay, you're going to say, how much money do you need to run a load? Now, he's going to think about that. He's going to say, well, what do you mean? And this is the response you're going to get nine times out of ten. And what do you mean? Well, we're a large dispatching firm, and we are part of a national network of dispatchers. And we understand that not every carrier can move their truck or can run loads for the same price. Because some carriers have higher expenses, some carriers have lower expenses. So we actually cater our load search specifically to your needs. In other words, if you tell me that you need $2.25, to run a load, and if you don't like running up north, you want to stay in the southern state, that's all we're going to look for. And we, and we won't contact you unless we have a load that's paying $2.25 or more per mile and is staying in the southern and out of the, out of the snow and out of the mountains. And we'll always try to contact you with at least three load options. How does that sound to you? Now, you can't tell me if you present that that way. That that guy is going to sit just, unless he's just a total a-hole and he doesn't really want to make money and he's not into making money, that's the only way he's going to tell you no. That's the only way he's going to tell you no. Now, I'm going to give you a scenario. Um, who do we have on here? Who, 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 wants to do, who wants to do some role playing with me today? Who, who wants to do some role playing real quick? Come on, somebody, somebody step up now. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just step up. I need somebody to tell me that they want to do some, they want to do some role playing. Who we have here? Me, oh, Miss Shantia James. Okay, Miss James. We're going to work with Miss James today. All right, Miss James. Miss James. When I call you, now, nah, Miss James, Miss James, go ahead and, there we go. Uh, Miss James, you unmute yourself. All right, good. Everybody, this is Shantia James. Uh, Shantia James, and say hi to everyone. Hello. All right, Miss James. You are going to be an irate carrier. 
you mad at the world. You mad because the loads ain't paying enough. You can't you can't afford to pay off your truck. I mean, the rates the rates are just you know the just shitty rates. Everybody wants to everybody wants to run loads at a low price. Everybody's offering all these low paying loads. The shippers ain't paying. The brokers taking all the money. We all sitting at home making ten thousand dollars a week, and they out there on the road and can't make no money. You mad? Okay, okay. <laughs> you don't know if you, you don't know if your husband you don't know if your husband home running around with whoever else. You mad? <laughs> Okay. Mad at the world. All right, so I'm calling you. Ring, 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 ring. Hey, Miss James, I see you're there in Chapman, Alabama, and we got a load that's running out of there. Um, it's paying $1,700. It's going 633 miles, and it's a um, full load of lumber, 40,000 pounds. There's something that I mean, think you might want. You said how much now? It's paying 1750 and it's running 633 miles. Oh, no. No. That ain't good enough. I can't, I can't, y'all, mm-mm, mm-mm. Not today, not tomorrow either. There ain't enough money for me. Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I understand. Is there, uh, first of all, let me apologize to you. And, uh, and, and see, she's not even being tough enough. She, she let me <laughs> off easy. But I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, uh, oh I got you yet. Uh, all right. Uh, well, first of all, Ms. Jane, let me apologize to you. Okay, I apologize, but it sounds like you've got some stuff going on there, and I just want to apologize. Um, I, I, I know it must be difficult uh, for you being out there on the road and you know and running your truck, and I know you have expenses. Trust me, I do. I was on operating myself, and I know you have expenses, and I know those expenses keep adding up, and I know you have people back at home who are depending on you to bring home some good money. They depend on you. You got to pay the bills. You got to put food on the table. And I understand that. Because oh, no. I'm having the time of my life. All these lot lizards and stuff I see out here, I am enjoying this road. Yes, I, I don't want to be out. I ain't worried about home. Uh-uh. I, I, I love the road. I love I it. Got you. I got you. But bottom line is, you still, you still want to make money, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. And you, and you need to make money, right? Yeah. You're right. right. Let me propose something to you. Regardless of what you think about me, regardless of what you think about the industry, let me ask you something. How much money do you need to run a load for and be able to put money and make a profit? Well, if you, if you can get me around $2,000 for two, three hundred 300 miles, that'd be great. That'd be great. So what, so what you're saying to me is you want a load that's paying what? Mile, cents per mile. Around three fifty to four dollars a mile. All right, so you want a load that's paying you around three fifty per mile. Is there any area of the country you won't go to for that kind of money? Oh yeah, I'm not going to the Midwest. I'm not going up um, to New York, New Jersey. Um, I don't do none of the West Coast. I love the South. Okay, so you love the South. All right. Because just so happens, we are a large dispatching firm, and we're part of a national network of dispatchers. And what we do is we cater our load search to your specific needs. So here's what I'm going to do for you. Let me, ask you, let me see here. So if I can find you a load that fits your needs and is paying you, what was that, $3 per mile? Three fifty to $4 I can meet. Okay. I'll go in between. Right. If it's a little less than three fifty, right. it depends so, on what it is. So if it's paying three fifty or better per mile, you will run that low if it's keeping you out of the Midwest, up north, and just keep you in the south, kind of south area, right? Oh, yeah. Not the, I need to be at home at, every night. Okay. So you want local, local runs. <laughs> I'm, I, it don't it'll, it'll have to be low. I'll go a little ways. If it's worth the money, I might consider it. Okay. But I'd rather, be a, I'd rather be in my area. All right. So I'm right from. now. So right now you're you're close to chapter. I see you're close to chapter out of bound. All right. Now, here's what you're gonna do. Now, so it's safe to say that if I can find you loads like that, you will run it, right? Absolutely. Okay. You, you got about five minutes. I sure do. Hold on for a second. See what I can find for you here, real quick. Now, here's what you all are gonna do. Okay, because you got her on the line, and she's giving you some kind of almost. Uh, unrealistic um, criteria. <laughs> but, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to go and you're going to find that load for her. You're going to go back to the home page. You're going to go over here to load search. 
And I tell you, all I had was one, two, three low boards. That's all I had. I didn't have, I didn't have the other low boards like you all have now. I didn't, I didn't have access to that. I just had one, two, three low boards. So you're going to go to one, two, three low boards. You know she's in, in Chapman, Alabama. So what you're going to do is you're going to go pull up Chapman, Alabama. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. You know she's in Chapman, Alabama. You're going to copy Chapman, Alabama. And then you're going to go back down here to the low board. And you're going to put in Chapman, Alabama. And then you're going to go over here to the map because you're going to hit this map area. Now, because she says she wants to stay in the uh, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. She don't want to go out Midwest. We're going to hit Oklahoma. We're going to hit Arizona. We're going to hit Tennessee. We're going to hit South Carolina, North Carolina. We're going to hit Kentucky. We're going to hit Missouri. We're going to hit Kansas. And we're going to go over here to maybe. We're going to go as far far west as New Mexico. We're not going to go past New Mexico. We're going to keep her out of California because she says she don't, she don't like going out west. We're not going to go to Arizona. We're not going to go all the way up here in the Midwest area. We're going to keep out of there. And we're not going to go all the way up here in the north. So th this is we're going to cover this little you know, this little southeast little blanket area here. We're going to blanket that area. We know she is a flatbed, so we're going to click flatbed. Okay, because she's looking at a flatbed low. If she was a reefer, we click reefer, whatever, whatever. All right? We're going to pick up the date. The date is uh, Monday, so we know she's going to leave out probably on tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. All right? We're going to click that. We're going to uh, go over here, and we are going to go down to where it says more options. Because remember, she told you that she wanted to be over a certain rate, right? So you're going to go to more options, and you're going to go down here and see the area where it says payment and rates. You're going to click where it says check that payment and rate box right there. Now you're going to click search. When you click search, look what it does. It pulls up all the loads that has the rates, right? Because you don't want to look at loads that don't have a rate because you, you ain't got the time. You got her on the phone waiting. So now you're going to go over here where it says offer. See where it says offer right over to the right? You're going to click that offer button. It's going to pull up the highest rates first. Because remember, you're looking for the high rates because she wants high rates. So you're not going to waste your time looking at the low rates. You're going to click them high rates, and it's in the areas of where she wants to be at because that's all you pulled up. And let's see here. We got 749 miles. We got $1,800. You're going to click that to see what it's paying um, per rate. That's paying $2.40 um, per mile. That's not quite um, what she wants, so that's not going to work. We're going to, we're going to click off that. We're going to go to the next one. We're going to try to find some 500 some odd miles. Uh, 1650. Let's click that. That's paying three dollars and four cents a mile. Uh, getting close to what she wants. That's not what she wants, so that's not gonna quite work. Now, if she was more realistic. That would work for her uh, right off bat. And chances are, you're gonna have more drivers who are gonna give you more realistic numbers. Let's go and try to find something that has low miles but high rate. Let's say what we got here. Low miles, higher rates. Low miles, higher rates. Low miles, higher rates. So that's what you're looking for. You gotta find something that has low miles, higher rates. Nope, that's two seventy five. That's not gonna work. And we might be out of luck with her because we having troubles meeting her unrealistic criteria of the low miles and higher rates. Now, what you can do is this. Because you all have because you all have access to other low boards, you can check the other low boards. I'm just going through here, see if we find something that's got like really, really low miles. I'm trying to find some of those low mileage ones. But we also want to look at the rates. Well, that's not going to quite do it. That's 370 miles with only paying $1,000. That's not going to do it. That's going to put that 270 a mile. Three hundred fifty. Nope, that's not gonna do it either. Okay. Okay, because now she obviously gave us an unrealistic money-wise because she wants to be home every night, <coughs> but she still wants to make. But she still wants to make what? She wants long mile money, but she don't want to run no miles. <laughs> Try to, try to sell it at three. Exactly, and that's what and that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna run through it real quick. If you can't find something that fits for, you're gonna go back up here and you're gonna click on this stuff right here. That's paying. 
Uh, let's go back up here to my offer. Hold on, get back to my. Yeah, go back to my rates, the high rates first. All right, go back to the high rates first. Go back to the. All right, that's two forty a mile. Let's not lose that one. That's three dollars and fourteen a mile. So you got one that's paying three dollars and fourteen a mile. It is running five hundred and forty three miles and it's paying three dollars and fourteen a mile. So you have that one, that's one option you have four. And then you have another one. Find another one. I thought I had one here that would pay like a little bit more than three, like three hundred of a mile. Nope. Looks like that's going to be the only one that's going to work. Three dollars and four cents a mile. And that's going from Pine Apple, Alabama to Aroka, um, North Carolina. All right. So you get back on the phone with him. Okay. Mr. James, I have a load for you. It's not, it's kind of hard to find a load that's going to match your criteria. Um, I, I couldn't find one that's going to quite meet what you want, but I did find one that's paying three dollars and four cents a mile. It's a total of eighteen hundred dollars. It's, it's it's close to what you want. What I can do is this: I can give the broker a call and see if we can get that bumped up for you. you like to do that? It's going from Pine Apple, Alabama, which is twenty-two miles from where you are right now, so it's not that far away from you, and it's going to Roper, North Carolina, and it's seven hundred and forty-nine seven hundred forty-nine mile run. And it's paying right now eighteen hundred bucks, which is going to get you about three dollars and four cents a mile. Now, what I can do is this. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, uh, hold on here. There we go. I'm sorry. It's going from um, Bessemer, um, Alabama, to Daytona Beach, Florida. So it's really keeping you in the um, south. All right, <laughs> that might be even better. And it's only going five hundred and forty-three miles. And it's paying sixteen fifty, so it's paying you three dollars and four cent um, per mile. But what we can do is we can call the the broker and see if we can get that bumped up for you. Yeah, call. Go ahead and call the broker because I pay ten percent to the company that I I run for. How much I got to pay you? 10%. I know it ain't free. Oh, t so that's twenty. That's twenty percent that's coming off top. Ten for, uh, I know. You're not an you're not an owner operator? <laughs> they let me they let me pick my own load so I can go anywhere I wanna go, but you know, oh. I you know, I got my, my truck and stuff through them, so yeah, I get them ten percent and everywhere they send me is is these longer runs and I'm not getting no money. So they, they did give me the option <laughs> where I can um well, I can go ahead and, and find my own loads, you know, and, and get myself more money. So I've been doing that. But it's just all these promises people making me, and they can't come through with the promises. Yeah, I understand. I do apologize to you, man. I really do. But we're going to try and find you some loads that's going to that's gonna work for you. So, unfortunately, you know, you're in with a company that's, that's charging you a whole bunch of money for, uh, for your truck. They're not paying you enough on the loads, and they're still taking 10% from you. I mean, if you don't mind me saying it, it sounds like you, sounds like you got with the wrong company. It sounds like you made a <coughs> Yeah, like you may have made a difficult, uh, a difficult deal. You know, you may have made a deal with the devil. But we're gonna try and, and and help you out and see what we can do to get you the kind of money you need to keep you running. So here's what I want to do. I'm gonna send you over my dispatch agreement. Now it's it's, it, 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 it's not a binding agreement or anything like that. It, it doesn't. We can't bind. hear you. Oh, I'm gonna send you over my dispatch agreement. Now, it's not a binding agreement where you're chained to us at the hip for, you know, for here to eternity. That's not what it is. Our dispatch agreement basically says that we're gonna, you're giving us permission to go look for you some better pay loads, okay? And when we find those better pay loads, we're going to contact you with the offers of showing you those loads. And if you like those loads, you're going to take them. If you don't like those loads, you don't take it, okay? Okay, and, and you know, if you, you come through for me, then I got a couple people that I know, and I definitely right. send them to you. Great. Uh, so I'm going to shoot that dispatch read over to you. I need you to uh, look at it, read it, sign it, and then shoot it back to me at the at the address up there, which says dispatch 
at rbbstransport.com. And I'm going to go ahead and start looking for you some loads uh, right now. And I'm going to call this broker on this load to see if we can get that bumped up for you, all right? All right. Thank you so much, right. man. Now, 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 as you all can see, now, she has some, she has some, 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 some seriously, you know, unrealistic break criteria. But that, but you, but you may run into that. You may run into that. But here's the thing, though, because you couldn't find it on this low board, you're gonna go over to the other low board that we have, Truckers Path. You're gonna go to Truckers Path. Then you're gonna go to All Freight Connect, and you're gonna do the same thing that you did here, and you're gonna do it there. You're going to go in, you're going to look for the high paying freight. So that's, cause that's how you're going to be able to find her the load uh, that she wants. So you're going to look for the high paying freight. You're going to do it on Trucker's Path. You're going to do it on All Freight Connect. You're going to do it on which, whatever load boards that you all have that where you can find the um, loads you need to find to get the freight you need to get. Okay? So that's what you're going to do. Uh, you're going to go look for trucks. And you're going to go look for loads, and you're going to follow the system. Now, back to, back to the system here. Now, remember, remember where we were. Remember where we were on the truck locator. Now, remember, in this truck locator, because remember, all you're doing is you're calling the trucks that match up with the loads, and you're pitching them. Now, I'm going to show you all that that was one, that was one driver. And that was that was a really really difficult one, but in that difficulty, we still was able to get what a dispatch agreement. So you got a shot at what finding her some loads. Why? Because like you said, she made a bad decision in getting her truck, and because of her bad decision, now she has she had to sign a deal with the devil just to be able to run some loads, but she's still not able to put food on the table and do what she needs to do even though she's having fun out there with all the lot lizards and everything, but <laughs> she, well, she's not really making any money. She's just buying her time and just living the life out on the road, which is what a lot of truck trip drivers wind up doing. So you got to let them know that you're here to help them and try and help them to get out of the situation. But first of all, you got to let them know that you understand. So you got to be willing to sit back and just listen to them complain for a while. And then you got to be able to be humble enough to apologize to them. Even though none of this is your fault, apologize to them anyway because you want to get them to soften up, open up, and listen to your proposal to help them to make what? More money. Help them out of the bad situation that they got themselves into. You're not going to tell them that, but that's what you need to get them to understand, that you're there to help them to get out of the situation, a bad situation that they got themselves into. Okay? Now, as I told you here, when you click on this, you had how many trucks that you could call around that one load? All right? Around that one load, you all had, there were 15 trucks that matched that load. So that's 15 trucks you got that, that you can call and make that same pitch to. 15 trucks. You can make that same pitch to. And you got how many loads on here? You got 67 loads on here. And you go to the next one, you got a what? You got another 15 trucks on this load. And then you go to the next one, you got another what? You got 11 trucks on this load. You go to the next one, and you got, in Gordo, you got how many trucks? You got 17 trucks that you can call and make that pitch to. In Gurley, Alabama, you got how many? You see what we're getting at here? And you can't, there's no way you can tell me, there's no, there's no way on God's green earth that you can tell me that if you, if you follow that system, if you work that system in calling all these trucks that are surrounding these loads here, at, and what time is it now? It is 9.30 at night. It's 8.30 at night. And you got all these trucks surrounding this load because they're at the truck stop. They're sitting. They're empty. They don't have a load. And you can't tell me that if you contact every last one of these trucks on 67 loads, you're averaging about 17 loads, 17 trucks per load that you can call. And you mean to tell me you can't book 7 or 8, 9, 10 loads? If you, te if you tell me you can't book at least 3 or 4 loads, then I tell you you ain't working the system. And if you tell me you're working the system, I'm going to call you a liar. Because I know better. 
I know better. What's happening is a lot of you are you start you, you you may call one or two of these trucks and then you say ah man that old man Calvin that man that that, that old man don't know what the hell he's talking about PC now nah. this this stuff don't work and then you go off and try doing your own thing then you go off and, try, and you're looking at other low boys you're doing stuff that don't mean a hill of beans you're doing stuff that ain't putting no money in National Hip Bank and it ain't gonna never put money in National Bank because you're trying to do it your way and not follow a proven method that actually makes you money because you can't tell me that if you don't follow this system and you don't use, use this approach and you contact all those trucks, it's just a matter of numbers. It's just a, come on, it's just, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like if I set up a bunch of, 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 of cards out there and, and I say, here, pick through the card deck and I give you a hundred chances to find the ace you got to find the ace eventually. And these odds are stacked so great in your favor with this system, there's no way in the world you can't tell me you're not going to book three, four loads, five loads a week. Really, you should be booking three, four loads per day. Minimal. Minimal. And if you call all these trucks on here, which is close to... With all these loads on here, you've got access to almost 800 to 1,000 trucks. And you can't tell me if you called them. If you made a commitment to call them. If you called 200 of them. If you called 100 of them. Statistically, 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 you will guarantee to close, what, 1% of them? <laughs> 3%, 4 maybe 10% if your pitch is good. If your pitch is great, you're going to close 40% of them. Do I make it... Am I making sense to any of you? I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. If you, if you think I'm just senile and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, tell me that too. But I guarantee you if you follow the system and you work the system, the system will work for you. But I can also guarantee you that if you don't work the system, you ain't going to make a dime. If you don't believe me, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. But check your National Hip Bank. If your National Hip Bank is not heavy, it's your own fault. Because this is not hard work, but it is work. This is not hard work, but it is work. Okay? You are going to have to do some work. You can't, this is not get rich quick. You're not going to come here and get fat off of a spoon feeding your low school. We're not here to spoon feed you. You are, are here to learn how to build your own business, be independent, start your own firm, go out and make your own million dollars a year and keep moving on and be independent and and be a monster in this in this business. Okay? Each and every last one of you has what it takes to be a monster in this business because you all made the commitment to join this group. So I know you got the drive. I know you want to do it. I know all of y'all, every last one of you all, you're at least smart enough to do it. But it's not going to happen just by you sitting around on the chat group all day not doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you just work this, just this alone, just this one system, I guarantee you'll make more money than you can shake a stick at. But you ain't going to get it without working the system. You gotta work the system, people. You gotta work the system. You gotta work the system. Okay? Alright. Uh, any questions on this system? Anybody need me to go over this on how to find the highest paying lows first and things like that? Anybody need me to go over that again? Does anybody have any questions on that? I have a question. Sure. Yes, can you sure. go over that one more time? Yeah, hold on. Uh, one person at a time. One, one person at a time. The young lady, ladies first. The young lady, the young lady said that she had a question. The young lady said that she had a question. Okay, because I had a driver contact me with a back of it. I thought to him my dispatch agreement, and he was like, "What is?" Okay, I can. You know, for some reason, I can barely hear you. Okay, hold on. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. There yes, ma'am. There you go. Okay. I had um, contacted a driver and he was, and I sent him my dispatcher agreement or whatever and he ended up um, I guess he looked it over and then like he contacted me back and he was like uh, he only like he already paid six percent to his dispatching company or whatever and they have factoring 
something her. I don't even know the message because he had wrote me back. He was like, I currently pay 8% for my dispatch services, and also I pay through a factoring company. So he didn't want to sign a dispatch agreement or whatever, or he didn't want me to do it because I told him, you know, we do, we charge like 10% or whatever, or we take 10% of the pay after they get paid or whatever. Nah, nah. Here's, what, here's, nah, here's, what, here's, how, here's how I would have handled that. And cut the mic off real quick, and so we don't have that um, uh, um that feedback. And go ahead and mute your mic real quick for me. All right. Here's how here's how I handle that. If he's paying six percent to his bitch that his his dispatching firm, obviously his dispatch firm is not doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. Okay, because he's because somehow or another he wound up with you. So obviously his dispatch firm is not doing what he's supposed to do because if his dispatch firm was, was handling their business, he wouldn't have had time to talk to you because he'd have been on low. Now, let's say he's in a situation where he has to pay his dispatch firm that six percent. That's cool. Because what you say to him, say, Look, here, here is what he, here here is what you say to him. So let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to profit, to make money? Which, and, and, and figure in the 6% that you owe to your dispatch firm that, 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 that you've got to pay. With them getting 6%, how much money do you need still to make money to run your truck? Now, if he says, well, on average, I need about $2.25 per mile, but my dispatch firm is getting 6%. So that means I need to probably bump that up to like two dollars and thirty-five, two dollars and forty cents um, per mile. All right, great. So what you're telling me is this: if I can find you loads that's paying two fifty-five per mile or better, and those loads are going at least five hundred miles, right? It doesn't matter what you're paying your dispatching company. Why? Because we're bumping your load criteria up, and we're searching for you higher, much higher paying loads that's going to cover the cost. That spread between what you got to pay your dispatching company and the 10% what you got to pay us, and you're still profiting a lot more money than you would have if you just stick with your dispatch um, company who is not doing the job that they should be doing for you. Is that what you're telling me? Did it, did, did everyone, does everyone understand what we just did? Does everyone understand what we just did? We just took out the concerns of him paying his dispatching firm 6%. Why? Because we're only going to look for him loads that's going to cover what? His dispatch firm, him, and us. Make these people real. Make them real. Because a lot of these people, they'll give you every excuse in the world. But if you make them real, my granddad used to say, make them decide to either shit or get off the pot, one or the other. Okay, either they're going to take a dump or get off, or get off the toilet. You're not going to sit there all day long like, like, like he used to tell you. Uh, like when you're being potty trained. You ain't going to sit there all day long just making these spaces and you ain't doing nothing. You either do something or you get off that pot. Make these people real. If you make them real, I guarantee you make money. In other words, learn how to be a salesperson. Sharpen your sales skills. Okay? But I, tell, I, I, I say this to you all all the time. Having better paying loads is not going to make you more money. Having access to more load boards is not going to make you more money. Okay? Having higher paying loads is not going to make you more money. Being a better salesperson will make you all the money in the world in this industry. Make yourselves good at being salespeople. All right. Did I answer that question for you? Yes. All right. Great. Was that satisfactory for you? Yeah, that worked. All right. Does everyone, uh, does everyone understand what we did by – Handling someone that says, well, I've got to pay this to this person, and they're taking this cut, and they're taking that cut. Because remember, we're not like everybody else. We are catering our load search to their needs. So all you got to do is do what? Find a way to meet their needs, and then just do that. People will tell you what you need to know to sell them if you just listen, or if you just ask them, or if you set them up for it. Everybody will tell you what you need to know to sell them if you ask them the right questions. And that's all this is. Find out what they find find out the one thing that they need or, or the or the or the criteria that they need in order to say yes to you. And then you provide that to them. I mean this is it's just that simple. That's called being a salesperson. Okay? All right. Um all right, somebody wanted us to go back over how we find those loads, how we find the highest pin loads. 
right, this is the procedure. The procedure is you're going to go to the um, procedure is you're going to go to the truck locator. When you get to the truck locator, okay? You're going to uh, find one of our loads. Uh, it's going to pull up the loads. The reach factor here and pull up the loads. There we go. It pulls up the loads. Let's go to this one right here, folks, in Alabama. It pulls up the loads. You find a truck somewhere close to our loads. And you get that truck. And Dorsey Trucking, you're going to call up Dorsey Trucking. Dorsey Trucking, say, trucking is going to say, I know I don't want that load that y'all got right there. Uh, I need a load that's paying uh, $2 and 40 cents per mile or better. And I don't want to go up in the north. I want to stay down in the warm weather and out the snow and out the mountains. All right, great. And it has to be going more than 500 miles. All right, no problem, no problem, no problem. So you're going to go find a load. You're going to go and you're going to put in folks. Now, I always like to just go and just copy and paste, but I don't like typing. I'm not, I'm a pecker. I'm not a typer. So I always copy and paste stuff. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all noticed it yet, but I don't like typing. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to load this back up. And I'm going to go over here to home page. And I am going to look for what? Load search. I'm going to load search. I'm going to click in where he's at. He is where? He is there. He is there. That's why I like copy and paste. And I'm going to go over here because he wants to stay out of the north. I'm going to hit map. He says that he will go anywhere that's not bringing him, taking him all the way up there in the north. So I'm going to go all the way across. I'm going to cover this whole bottom part of this map. So this guy said that he says he'll run. He don't, you know, he don't mind going out Midwest and going them long miles as long as he's paying money because he, cause he's the money maker. He wants to make some money. So you've got to cover all these states that keep him on the lower half of the United States, that keeps him out of the mountains, keep him out of the snow. You've got to cover all the states on the lower half. Let's say when you call this guy up, and let's say this guy might be a reefer. We're going to do something other than that. Let's say this guy... Let's say this guy might be a reefer. If he's a, if this guy's a reefer, you're gonna click reefer. Then you're gonna click when he's leaving when on tomorrow. Okay, fine. Um, let's say then he's um um he wants higher paying loads. You know right here, and you're gonna click right here where you see the payment and rates. You're gonna click that payment and rate. You found that by clicking what more options. Okay, you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna click search. Okay, and Oddly enough, there are no reefer loads that are running out like that. So that didn't work for us. We might need to increase our radius. So we need to go back. Let's see here. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's increase the radius 50 miles. All right? We got a couple of loads. We got a couple of hits. So we increase the radius uh, another 50 miles, which means he's got a dead hit a little bit to get to the high, to get those higher paying loads. All right. So we we'll go over here to offer. And we're going to get the highest pin loads first, which is going to be $2,500 for going how many miles it is going. That's not a good pin load. I don't know where they get these reefer loads here from, but that, that is not a good pin reefer load. Uh, tell you all that right now. Yeah, that's only like a dollar thirty-four cent a mile. That ain't, that's not working. I would, I would think a reefer load would pay more than that, but that's not going to work for them. But let's go down here to one that says uh, you got eight. 825 miles, and that's paying 218 a mile. That's actually not a good reefer load either. Yeah, reefer. So these reefer loads kind of suck on here tonight, but let's go back and let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, and let's edit this. Oh, no. oh it, it probably because it's leaving out of Alabama, but let's go back and let's um, say he's a dry van. I mean, let's say he's a flatbed which is what that guy was. I was just trying to see what the reefer loads were. But let's say he's a flatbed. Everything else stays the same. And you're going to search for flatbed loads. There we go. Got a lot of flatbed loads out. All right. Highest rates first. Got some good loads. All right. If he's willing to go 109 miles out and pick up in Purvis, Mississippi, and he's going to run into Phoenix, Arizona, 1,569 miles and it's paying 3,200 bucks. That is paying $2.04 a mile. That's not that good. It's okay, but it's not that good. Let's pick this 740 mile run. Paying 1,800 bucks. 
And that's better. That's two dollars and forty cent two dollars and forty cent a mile. That's paying better. And if you want to find him a decent load, <coughs> go down here and find some low miles, but keep him over five hundred. But see what it's paying. There's one that's five hundred and forty three miles paying sixteen fifty, that's three dollars and four cent a mile. Now that keeps him well above his what? His two twenty two twenty five um per mile that he wanted. So that's definitely gonna work for him. Okay? You're gonna you're gonna grab that for him, that's gonna work for him, that's gonna be option number one. Um you're gonna grab him some more options. You can grab him some more options by just going through here and you're looking at and just kind of look at the uh, the mileage and then look at the rate, and that'll give you a good idea if you mile the rate ratio. And that's what I normally do. I just go and look at the miles, and I check the rate over here. If the mile doesn't like, if the rate doesn't like, it three times the amount of the miles, I'm not gonna click on it, or at least two and a half times the amount of the miles, I'm not gonna click on it. Because you al you already know that's not meeting his criteria. His criteria is like 225. So you'll find some stuff. Let's try this one. Yeah, 228. That's right over his 225. I mean, you're going to have stuff that you'll find for him. Uh, the stuff in here, $3.04 a mile. There's another one from Bessemer, Alabama, going to Daytona Beach. Uh, $2.09 a mile. Two thousand nine cent a mile. Yep, two thousand nine cent a mile. Two thousand nine cent a mile. Yep. So you 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 find a couple of that works for him, and you're gonna go back and you're gonna present them to him. You're gonna present them with at least two to three offers, and if you if you find someone what they want, they are gonna run those loads, because you ask them what is it do you want, what do you need to. And all you got to do is meet their needs. And if you do this on a, you know, on a continuous basis and just follow the plan, you will make money. Um, anonymous, I'm sorry, Kevin, I didn't get the first part of this call. Yeah, I understand. It is being recorded, uh, whoever the anonymous is. It is being recorded. So, um, so you'll be able to go back and put it up and and play it back later on tonight, okay? Um, but as you can see, oh, hey, Tracer, how you doing? All right, as, as you all can see, if you work the system, the system will work for you, but you got to work the system, people. I mean, I mean, let's face it. I mean, this is not get rich quick, but you can get rich doing it, okay? I mean, come on. I'm okay, Carol, I have a quick question. <laughs> yeah. When you book, say you you got everything you need and you're booking that person a load. Like you want to try to book, you know where they're going, so you want to try to book their next load. If you're booking someone in an area that doesn't have a lot of stuff coming out of it, how do you work around that? Like do you just book them a load and move on to the next person and just be done with that particular person? Or are you trying to build a relationship so that person will come back to you? But if you always send them to a dead area, how do you? Well, you know, you're not, well, you're not always sending them to dead area. You book the loads that you can book. You find people loads that you can find loads for. I mean, let's face it, we're not God. We can't solve every problem, and and hopefully we're not the only option. You understand what I'm saying? You 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 you're not quote unquote their savior. You're here to provide a service to them, and like any service, sometimes our service works for you. Sometimes our service doesn't work for you, but. Eight times out of ten, our service is going to work for you. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And sometimes, and, and sometimes, and sometimes, if you send someone to a dead area, you may be able to find a load that's 70 miles out or 100 miles out where they have to deadhead and get them out. Uh, so you, you can, you, every area has loads that's coming out of it, right? Every area has loads that's coming out. You may have to run them on a short, like a rate short. Okay, let's say if you run them down to Miami and the loads are not coming out of Miami and the only loads you're seeing coming out of Miami is paying what? A dollar ten cent a mile, dollar twenty cent a mile. But if you find him a dollar twenty cent a mile out of Miami and it's going up to Jacksonville, okay, 
or if it's, it's getting him to Jacksonville, and then you start looking for a load from Jacksonville that may be paying, what, $3.20 a mile. Yeah, see what we're getting at? And then you say to him, say, look, what you do is you go ahead and you pre-book him out, which is what you should be doing anyway. Because when I was doing the number of loads that I was doing, there were some of my clients that I was booking out for two weeks at a time. And a carrier loves you if you can send him if you can if you can send a carrier his schedule for the next two weeks, you're part of the family. You get invited to Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner. You get you, you in on the bar mitzvah, whatever it is, you in on it. You family. And so you learn how to start booking your carriers out for at least a week out in advance because you know where they're going. You know where the load's going to drop. So go ahead and start finding the load, just picking up from there, leaving out the next day. Everyone should know. Or at least learn how to run a truck. If you haven't ran a truck, at least learn how to run a truck. Everyone should know that the average driver can only drive 600, 650 miles per shift. 11 hour driving shift, you, you, you know, you can only run eight, eight hours straight, then you gotta shut down for, the, uh, for 30 minutes, then you can run um, two and a half to three more hours, then you gotta shut down for 10. Under that criteria, you, the average truck driver is only gonna run what? 600, 650 miles at the most. So if that's the case, if you've got an 800-mile run, it's going to take you a day and a half to run that load. So you know that if you leave it on a Monday, he's going to drop it sometime Tuesday night. Sometimes he may have to sit there at the shipper overnight and then drop that load early Wednesday, early, early, early Wednesday morning, which means you can book him on a load leaving out sometime Wednesday before 11 or 12 o'clock. So if he's running a load that's average 800 miles, 600, 700 miles, whatever the case may be, and if he's leaving out on a Monday, he's going to drop it there Tuesday night, so find him a load that's leaving out Wednesday morning. Then you know from he's got another eight, um, six to 800 mile run, he's going to drop that when? Sometime Thursday night or early Friday morning. So you go in and find him a load and you're booking for a load leaving out Friday morning. Then you know he's going to pick that load up. He's going to drop it probably on Monday because most places don't allow you to drop on the weekend. So then you go in and find him a load leaving out when? On Monday sometime Monday or on Tuesday, leaving out. Then you, and just keep following that and just keep booking him loads. You go ahead and pre-book him out. You schedule him out. You schedule him out. I was scheduling my clients out for two weeks at a time because when I was running my truck, I was booking my own load and scheduling myself out for two weeks at a time because I knew how to manage. I knew, what, I knew my truck. Every driver knows his truck. You as dispatchers, as professionals, need to understand how these trucks run so that you can go in and pre-book these loads for, for, for these carriers. That way it lessens your load and you know you got money coming in on a regular basis. And you're making the carrier a lot happier with you so he is satisfied as shit with you. I mean, you, I mean, you, his, you his boy, you his girl, I mean, you it. You it. You know? But this is what you got to do. You got to start treating this like it's your business because it is. A lot of you are treating this like it's a hobby. I don't know too many hobbies. I don't know too many hobbies that put $7,000 a week in your pocket. Okay? I just don't know. I don't know too many hobbies that are going to put $1,000 a day in your pocket seven days a week. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't understand how could you not get serious about this. Okay, that I don't understand. How could you not be serious about this when this much money can be made in this? And I can't understand why you're not getting serious about it. Work the system. The system will work for you. But that was a great question. Um, Martin Elliott says, uh, great question. I have the same question myself. We will actually, uh, are we actually doing the dispatching? And if not, we will need to learn, okay? Uh, do you need a schedule, pickup, and delivery appointments for these loads, or are they already scheduled? Are you talking about the loads that we put on the load board? Uh, these loads are already, they're not scheduled, okay? Um, when we put them on the load board, that means they're available for that day. And you have to call to see if they're still available. They're not. They're, 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 and we're not the only. We're not the only people that they send these loads out to. I mean, you may have about 
10, 12, 15, 20 brokers that they these loads to, and another 15, 20 dispatching firms that they these loads to. And the, first, and the first person that calls them up in the morning and says, hey, I want that load, that's the person who's going to get that load. But let, me, but let me make something I'm clear to you all right now. These ain't your loads. Okay, you all didn't go out and get these loads. You all are not here for us to spoon feed you loads. So if you think you're going to make all the money you need to make on the loads that we have on here, then you're going to starve to death. Okay, so don't get, don't get attached to the loads that we post. Because and, and here's what you need to understand: a shipper at any time can say, "Hey, you know, hey, you know, we're not going to be sending y'all um, no more loads. Uh, we're done sending you all loads uh, for, for, for this year, or we've had a change of direction, and we're not going to send loads anymore." So do not get attached to the loads that we send you all that we put out every day. Those loads are there for, for bait. That's primarily what they're there for. They're there for bait. So you all can use those loads to attract carriers and use them to build your own book of business, build your own load source. If you, wanna, if you want to get, one of the things that you all should be doing also too, but besides this, following this system will get you paid. Use the loads that we put on there to, as that's the setup. There are, there are, three, there are three parts to a sale that makes a great salesperson, and that's the setup, the flip, and the close. The setup, in our case, is the loads that we're providing for you all. That is the setup. That's the bait. Okay? The flip is when you flip that carrier, because nine times out of ten, by the time you all get the loads um, anyway, and the time people call in on them, most of those loads are booked anyway. Okay? Because you know, a lot of these brokers book those loads early in the morning. And they usually don't get them to us until about 8.30, sometimes 9 o'clock. And by the time we get them onto the low board, carriers start calling me in on them. It's, about, it's already what? 11, 12 o'clock before carriers starts calling in on them, which means 80% of those loads are already booked. They're already taken. A lot of brokers will call up and go ahead and grab those loads off rip. They'll, they'll, they'll say, yeah, give us that load, give us this load, give us that load, and give us that load. Because they know they have carriers that they can just assign them to. A lot of companies that, that they send to a lot of these carrier groups that have their own trucks, they're going to grab a boat. They're going to grab a good chunk of these loads. They may grab 40 out of the 70 loads, and because they're in areas that they know they got trucks there, and all they're going to do is they're going to force dispatch those trucks. So don't don't get it in your head that I'm just going to make money off the loads that RBBS provides to us, because that's not why you're here. Those are our loads. You didn't, you didn't go out and get those loads, so those are not your loads anyway. Those are our loads. We're here to show you how to build your own load, how to get your own load, how to get carriers, how to get brokers to start sending you loads every morning, how to get shippers to start sending you loads every morning. That's why you're here. You're here to learn that. Okay? So don't get it in your head that I'm just going to make money off the loads that they give me, because that ain't going to happen. You're going to starve to death. Trust me on that. You will starve to death. I'm not. I'm. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling it to you like it is. Okay, you will starve to death if that's what you're here for. Okay, learn how to be salespeople. Now, if you want to start building your own load list, if you want to start building your own load list, remember we got this thing called what? McCray's on our what you call it? Uh, wait a second. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? I gotta find it. We got our own. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Give me a second here. I'm gonna pull it up for you. We have. Oh, oh! I don't have to do that. I can go right here. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. I can go right back to here. There we go. We have. Remember this? Our access to shippers and brokers. If you want to start building your own load list, okay, here's what you all can do. Go to our SIP code site. Because we have we give you all unrestricted access to the SIP code uh, to the SIP code site. Uh, I'll put this on the um, I'll, I will put this on the um, chat group 
So if you want it, you can go to the chat group and you all can pull it up. I'm pulling on the chat group right now. I'm going to put it on the chat group and I'm going to send it to you all right now too. All right, there we go. There's, there's a link right there. All y'all can click on that link and, and it'll take you right there to it. Okay? And I'm also going to put it on the chat group so you all can get it right now. All right. If, you, if you're already there, hold on, wait for me, and I'll show you all how to, how to, how to access uh, 19 million plus shippers and, and brokers. Okay? All right. So let me show you all how to access this. All right. So, all right. We're going to go here. All right, here we go. All right, this is how we access all the shippers in the country, all the brokers in the country. You know, you don't need to pay for a list. We got access. We give you all unrestricted access to every shipper in the country and every brokerage firm in the country. As dispatchers, it is easier for you all to get loads from brokers than it is from shippers. I'm going to tell, tell you this right now. You have a much easier time getting brokers to send you their load list every morning. Why? Because as a dispatcher, a broker is not paying you. Okay? You're not being paid by the shipper. So there's no chance of double brokering. You're being paid by the carrier. Your contract is with the carrier. Your dispatch agreement you have is with the carrier. So the carrier pays you. So the broker does not lose any money by sending you his loads to help him make more money. Does that make sense to everyone? So you, are, you have a much better chance of contacting brokers, and you just go and put in freight broker, just type in freight broker, and you click it, and it pulls up all the freight brokerage firms in the country. You click on one of them, and you just call them up, and you say to them, say, hey, Mr. Broker, this is um, Teresa or Denise, and I'm calling you because I am a dispatcher. I'm part of a national network of dispatchers, and we have our dispatch agreement in our contract with the carrier, where the carrier pays us. So we're not brokers, so there's no chance for you to be in a devil broken type situation. I'd like to see if I can help you book an extra 20 to 35% of the loads that you have each day. If there's something you think that we can work together on, you, you just send me your load list every morning, or you give me access to your uh, private uh, broker's load board. Now, if you called up all these brokers and you, and you explain it to them that way, because brokers, they understand that you're a dispatcher. They understand that you get paid by the carrier. They understand that it's not costing them any money whatsoever for you to help them do their job, help them book more loads. What better way to get, what better way to get these brokers to start sending you loads every day? Uh, can I charge the broker? A, hell, no, you cannot charge the broker. No way, no how. <laughs> that is totally illegal. You cannot charge the broker. <laughs> don't even, don't even, don't even, don't even bring that question. <laughs> no, uh, Charles, you can't charge the broker. No, uh, uh, there's no way you can charge the broker. Okay, no way, no how. Your agreement has to be with the carrier. You are a dispatcher. The carrier has given you consent to find them loads. So, therefore, you can have a broker to send you loads, but you cannot charge the broker for the loads. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, what about fuel? They ain't got nothing to do with you. I mean, what does fuel have to do with you as a dispatcher? Okay. Uh, Terrell Davis is asking, and what about fuel? And what about fuel? That has nothing to do with you as a dispatcher. Okay, every carrier is responsible for, for his fuel. Now, if that broker has, has, has a fuel surcharge built into um, that low fee or whatever, that's, that's between them and the broker. They ain't got nothing to do with you. We are just here to find them loads. That's it. That's your only job. Now, if you're going to become a broker, if you're going to become a freight broker, you get your own bond and all that type of stuff, right? That's something that you have to work out a contract with the shipper. If you're going to become a freight broker, you've got to work out with the shipper to pay for the extra on the fuel. Now, you have some factoring companies that has, you know, stuff for, uh, like, upfront pay, fuel, pay, and all that. But that's between the carrier and that factoring company. This is what I love about being a dispatching firm. And this is one of the reasons why we decided that we wanted to switch over to a, a dispatching firm. We don't have to deal with all that, all that BS. Fuel surcharges, uh, 
you know, liabilities, insurance, uh, all that stuff. We ain't got to deal with. As a dispatcher, you ain't got to deal with none of that. As a dispatcher, all you are doing is you are authorized by the carrier to find them loads. And when the carrier gets paid, they shoot you your percentage. That's it. That's it. That is it. That is the extent of your liability. That is the extent of your responsibility. Now, if you want to process paperwork for them, you can, you can do that. Like we do. We process the paperwork. We ship stuff of paperwork back and forth between the broker and the carrier. But as far as all this other stuff with fuel stuff, that ain't got nothing to do with us. That got to do with them and the person who is paying them, which is that broker or that shipper, whoever's paying them. They pay us. We don't pay the as a dispatcher, you don't pay the carrier. Now, if you are a if you are a broker, yes, you can work out ways to pay them. You know, fuel surcharges and all this type, all, all this other type of stuff. But I'm telling you, that's just another headache. Okay, you want to keep this business simple, stupid, and just make money. So, as a dispatcher, I can negotiate price with the broker on behalf of the carrier. Oh, yeah. But only if the if the carrier authorizes you to do so. Yeah, you can negotiate price with the broker, okay? But don't get crazy with it, because if a broker has loads that he that he's sending you, and if you call him back on every load trying to get an extra five hundred dollars, that broker's gonna see right through you. All you're doing is you're trying to pad your pocket. So the broker's gonna start thinking, hey, you know what? I wonder if she even passing that. Five hundred dollars on over to that carry. I wonder if that's not all going in her pocket. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? But it's kind of hard to do because the broker still has to pay cut the check to the carrier, and the carrier's got to pay you. So yeah, it's be kind of hard for you to pass your pocket unless that carrier has authorized you to cash checks for them. And I, I doubt that's going to happen. Okay. So, but you know, you don't want to get carried away with negotiating with the broker on every load. Because, because remember, because remember that broker can cut you off at any time. If you got, if you got a source that's sending you loads, you want to keep that source happy, because that's where your loads are coming from. All right, all right. So, uh, so basically, we are building relationships with the shippers as dispatchers, not as a broker. Exactly, because you are not a broker. You're building relationships as a shipper for right now. Now. At some point in time in this whole thing where we're showing you all how to do this and we're taking you by the hand and we're guiding you, at some point in time when you feel comfortable and ready to do something on your own, you all are going to have to make a decision. Do I want to be a great brokerage firm and get my bond and put up the investment and have the responsibility and the liability, or do I want to just build my own dispatching firm, or do I want to be a freight forwarding firm? And when you decide which one of those you want to be, let us know, and we will help you get set up in whichever one you want to be at the lowest cost available. Because so we are able to show you how to get your bond for as little as eighteen to nineteen hundred dollars um, for the whole year. If you have decent credit, if you have bad credit, we can help you get it for as little as thirty-five to thirty-six hundred um, for the whole year, versus paying ten percent, which is seventy-five hundred dollars of that seventy-five grand. We can show you how to get your insurance at the lowest rate. We can show you how to get your uh, uh, your authority for less than 500. We'll show you how to get, you know, um, 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 uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Elliot. Ask the question. Martin, you have a question? You want to ask? Uh, okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis says, how long do you think it would take to get comfortable with this? That depends on you. Okay? Um, I got a couple of people on here right now, and I think they're ready to start doing it, on, doing it on, 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 on their own. I think Mr. Richard Stevens is ready to just go ahead and do his own thing. But obviously, Mr. Richard Stevens has to feel comfortable with doing that. But as far as I'm concerned, he's got it. He's He's... He, he's ready to start his own dispatcher firm or, or whatever he wants to do because he's got it because he's booking loads with ease right now. Tony Davis, he's another one. I think he's ready right now. You know, I mean, I mean, obviously he, he's got it, okay? How do you unmute? Just click on the your little mic button 
to unmute yourself, man. Uh, hold on here. Let's see, Mr. Martin, let me find you. You got a little mic button there. And all you got to do is click on it and, you, and to unmute yourself. Uh, I got you. All right, Mr. Martin, go and ask your question. Mr. Elliott, go and ask your question. You're unmuted. Hello? Mr. Elliott, you're unmuted. Mr. Elliott, you can ask your question now. You're unmuted. Yeah, obviously you got some other issues going on, Mr. Elliott. Okay, you say you're on the phone. Okay, you're on the phone. Well, if you're on the phone, Mr. Elliott, what's your phone number? Because I can't see you on the phone. I don't know what your phone number is. Okay, Tony, Calvin, address Shantia James' question about the the mic, the MC number. Where is her, where is her question at? Hold on, I've got about fifty questions here from different people. But I don't see her. My question: I had a um, I had a carrier who you know a load that fits him perfect, and when I called a broker just to get more information about the load. The broker hung up on me, and it's the only load that I found for Wednesday, and he hung up on me because I wouldn't give him the carrier's MC number. Well, <laughs> let's just face it. You're going to run into a-holes because, look, the only reason he wanted the MC number before you got – now, let me ask you a question. Did you have that carrier's uh, under a um, dispatch agreement already? I called him, and that was me getting information from him where he was going. Like that was our initial call. I'll okay. hurry up so, and, and went and look for that exactly, load and exactly, get exactly. you right. know. Then yeah, so just say to the broker, say, look, say I have to protect myself because I know that if I give you that, I not saying that you would do it, but you have to understand, I'm not, you know, I wasn't born yesterday, you know, and and you have to understand if I give you the MC number then what stops you from calling that carrier and just booking that load directly with him? Okay, because that's what he's going to do. If you give up the carrier's MC number before you have them under a dispatch agreement, and brokers know this, they, they know you're shopping the um, load board to try to find a load for a carrier who wants a load right now. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of times these, you get some slick brokers that will want to go around you to get the carrier's MC number. Here's what I would do. I would go back and let that um, that carrier know, say, hey, I found a load for you, but I need to get you signed up to a dispatch agreement before I can get all the information on it. The dispatch agreement doesn't bind you to me, not saying that you got to take that load. If once I get your once I get the agreement signed, then I can go and and legally negotiate with the broker to get the highest paying rate on that load. And then I'll let you know what that rate is, and if you want it, you take it. If you don't, then you don't. You understand? Thank you, Calvin. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, believe it or not, I know a little bit of something about this business. Hey, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you, you all call me all the time. I try to answer every question you all call me with. I don't think I've ever received a phone call yet from anybody that I wasn't able to give them a satisfactory answer. Um, to a question, and I get about 120 calls per day, and, and I try to answer most of them. If I don't, I'll call you back. Okay. Um, hey, Calvin. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's hey, go on. Uh, on that scenario with the young lady there, if yeah. she was to give uh, another MC number, just you know, you know, if she has another MC number, uh, no? don't do that. Don't do that. No. That's okay. fraud. Don't do that. Now, if it's a if it's a, uh, don't do that because even if it's an MC number of a carrier, you are signed up with, okay? And if he pulls up that carrier, he calls that carrier up, and he says to you, um, 
And he calls that carrier up and says, hey, uh, I just talked to your dispatcher that you wanted a load, and that carrier says, I ain't asking for no load, then that, then, that, then, that, then that broker can go in and, re, and, and report you to the load board. Okay, okay. And then you get kicked off the load board. But oh, actually, okay. we, get, actually we, get, we get kicked off the load board. Oh, okay. So don't ever do that. All right? Gotcha. Um, Mr. Elliot, let me find your number here, 404. Let me find that number here, Mr. Elliot. Give me a second. Four oh four. All right, here we go. All right, Mr. Elliot, <clears throat> Hello. Ask a question. There you go. Can you hear me, sir? I hear you just fine. Thanks. Um, so my biggest question is um, from a dispatching perspective, um, like as far as, and I think Kate was asking this same question, like the carrier now has the load, he's going to pick it up. Is RBBS doing that that um, logistic work? Like are y'all like mediating, making sure it got there, making sure, right. you know, having that conversation with that carrier? All right, All right. here is what we're doing. Here is the procedure for booking a load, okay? We're going to go through this, all right? This is the procedure for booking a load. When hey, let me, let, me, let me stop you. I'm sorry. I, I definitely understand that procedure. I'm just curious, like, about just, just simply the communication with the carrier after I know he's confirmed and he's going to go pick up the exactly. load. He's dropping exactly. the load off. If you're asking that question, then you don't understand the procedure. So let me go through the procedure, Okay. Because if you're okay. asking that okay. question, you don't, you clearly do not understand the procedure, all right? Because that question goes directly to the procedure. So let me explain what yes, the procedure sir. is. All right. The procedure for booking a load is once you get the load, once you get the the dispatch agreement signed, first of all, get the dispatch agreement signed. When you get the dispatcher, when you send that dispatch agreement over to a carrier, I want you all to send us a email, and you're gonna send it to. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna type it in to you all right now. You're gonna send. Uh, here we go. You're gonna send an email to dispatch at rbbs transport. dot com. All right, you all are going to send a, you all are going to send an email address over to dispatch at rbbestransfer dot com, and the email address is going to have your information, okay, your name, your extension, your phone number, and your email address, identifying you as what the dispatcher or the agent. Okay, you're going to have the carriers information. You're going to title it. You're going to have your information. Okay, someone said I was muffled. You're going to have your information. So when you send that when you send that email over, you're sending us what's called an info email. Everything you do, when you do it, you're going to send us an info e e e email. Okay? Basically, you're letting us know what it is you're doing and what we should we should be expecting. Because remember, we are ran by a bunch of interns. We have a whole bunch of interns from Florida State, FAMU, and TCC. And they don't know you from a hill of beans. They don't know none of you all. They log on from their dorm room or from their hotel or from their, I'm sorry, their, their, uh, their apartment, wherever they're logging on at, and they're doing work for us for their college credit. So when you all do something or when you send something to us, don't just have a carrier send us a dispatch agreement and we don't and we weren't expecting it. We don't know where it goes. We don't know who it's for. We don't know why that's you – know, I mean, the, the interns don't know none of that. So what you need to do is anytime you – before you send anything over to us, anytime, anything you send over to us, send us the info e email. That info e the email needs to have your information on it. It needs to have the person's information you're sending that over on. If it's a dispatch agreement, you're sending us an information uh, email that has your name, your email address, your phone number, your contact information, identifying you as the, the agent. 
He needs to have the carrier's name, email address, phone number, DOT number, and there needs to be a note there that says dispatch agreement is pending. Okay, which means you're letting us know to expect a dispatch agreement from that person. And when we get that dispatch agreement from that person, it is to be assigned to you. That's why we need the info on you, them, and what it is we're expecting. So that when the interns get this, they'll know exactly what to do with it. Then they want to call me and say, hey, I just, we just got a dispatch agreement. Uh, we don't know who it's assigned to. We don't know, you know who it goes to or what it's for. You see what I'm saying? If you book a load, if you book a load, send us the same info. Send us the info on you, name, number, email address, identify yourself as an agent, the carrier, our information, name, number, email address, DOT number, the broker's um, information, name, number, email address, and the load information, where it picks up, where it drops off, when it picks up, how much is paying, how many miles is going, that type of stuff. Send that every time, no matter what you send, you send in an info sheet letting us know to expect it. That way we got the info sheet and they, and they see that. So when they get that information, when that broker sends over the confirmation sheet, it's not just a confirmation sheet that came over and they don't know where that confirmation sheet go. Okay, who's the, who's you know who's the, who's who's the dispatcher? Who gets paid on this? How, uh, how do we assign this? Because 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 sometimes we get a whole bunch of dispatch agreements and no info sheets, and we don't know who to assign these dispatch agreements to. And then when and then when when you and then when you're missing your paycheck, you are wondering why you missed the paycheck. That's why. <laughs> okay, so. Get in the habit of sending over that dispatch hey, Cal. Yeah, go ahead. So so um, the dispatch agreement has been sent. It's accredited to me. Then what? Then we just booked the load. If once we so, so my, that, my question is, my question on. is, I, I I'm sure someone has to talk to the truck I'm, driver, the literal I'm, truck I'm, driver, about I'm, how to I'm, pick I'm, the load I'm, up, I'm, about... I'm, I'm, Ahead, I understand your question. Give me time to answer it. Okay, when you book the load, okay, when you book the when we book the load, once we get when we get when we get the load information, you send us send us that the load information, okay, over where the load is going, who the broker is, who the carrier is, all the information on it. Then we get that confirmation sheet. Then, I, like I said, then our interns know what to do with it. Because they got the load information. They know that the broker on this load is this person. They know that you are the person who is, who is the agent. They know that the, they got all the information on the carrier. So when that load confirmation sheet comes over, they know to take that load confirmation sheet and go ahead and send it to that carrier that's on that info sheet that you already sent over. The, 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 now, if you haven't sent that info sheet over, they're not going to know where to send that to. You understand what I'm saying? So they know now that load, that confirmation goes over to the carrier. Send it over to the carrier. Let them know. Say, hey, we're processing this load for you. Get this signed. Send it back to us so we can send it back over to the broker. They send it. They sign it. Get it back over to us. We send it back over to the broker. Why? Because you sent us what? The info sheet telling us that this is the broker on this deal. We know where it. And our interns know where to send this stuff to. It all starts with that info sheet. No, in, no info sheet. Your loads don't get processed in a timely fashion. You send us the info sheet. Your loads get processed in a timely fashion. Yes, we handle all your processes, but only if you send us that info sheet. Hey, Calvin, Calvin. Yep. The 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 processing is what I'm asking about. Are you? This is all my question is: Are you guys going to teach us how to do the processing? I mean, if you want to process your own loads. All you got to do is just I, I guess as a freight broker, wouldn't I eventually, like, independently, wouldn't I have yeah. to take on that responsibility? Exactly. Exactly. And all you're doing is just bothering what we're doing. That's all you're doing. You, all right. Cameron. If, if, you said, if you know that we get a confirmation sheet, right? Right? Yes, sir. And this, process, and this process is not that hard as a broker, right? As a broker, you're never going to be dealing with brokers anyway. You're always going to be dealing with shippers. You're going to deal directly with shippers. 
if you want to become a broker. If you want to become a broker, you're never going to deal with brokers. There is no way for you to ever work with other brokers because <coughs> that is them a broker. I don't care if a broker sees something and says, let's co-broker. Don't do it because there's no such thing as co-broking. That is devil broker. And if you get reported, the hammer will drop on you. Okay? There's no way that you ever deal with another broker. As a broker, you're only going to deal with shippers. That's all you're going to deal with. So there's no way for you to work with another broker and not break the law. Okay? Let's get that straight. All right. So as a broker, if you're, if you're dealing with a shipper, the shipper is going to send you the confirmation sheet directly. Okay? And all you're going to do is you're going to take that confirmation sheet, you're going to send it over to the carrier, the carrier is going to sign it, send it back to you, and you're going to send it back over to the shipper. Shipper is going to dispatch that load out. Hey, but Kevin. The broker is going to have to track that load. Yeah. Put up that one from Mr. Dixon. That'll, that'll show everything. Yeah, I got to find it. But, oh, okay. Yeah, but, he's, but what, he's, what he's asking is, but he's asking, he's not asking about the procedure. He's asking about how does he go through the process of booking loads as a broker, okay? And to be honest with you, when you get to that point, if you know that you want to be a broker, you get to that point, all yeah. you got to do is just call me up outside of the training. Do the okay. dispatching first, my man. Uh, it's easier. Do the, do the dispatching yeah. first. It is a lot easier. Don't even, don't even worry about the broker right now. Get the dispatching down, and yeah. then, I mean, like he said, it's a yeah. process. Yeah. Get the dispatching and, down, and, and then you, we, can, we can go from there. Yeah, and then when you get ready to start, when you're ready to do brokering, <clears throat> get with us, and then we will cater, we will, we will, we will cater our, um, our consulting to match what you want to do at that time. You know what I'm saying? But... In our training calls, our training calls are designed to show you all how to make money right now, how to get on the load board, how to go through the, the process of becoming better salespeople. Now, each one of you all can work with us individually on your specific needs as far as what you want to do. Like, if you want to, like, everybody on here don't want to be a broker. Everybody on here don't want to be a dispatcher. Everybody on here don't want to be a freight forward. We got some people on here that, 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 that don't want to do none of those. They just want to go work for another uh, firm. So for us to try and, and, and have a training call specifically for you when we've got 60 other people on here that want to do something different, uh, that's kind of hard to do. That's why we have the consulting phase where if you, when you decide, okay, if you say, okay, I want to do, do brokerage, then call me up during the day and say, hey, let's talk about this brokerage thing. You understand? Calvin, one quick question about I your do. process. Thank you. All right. Yeah, go ahead. That's the question. Okay, so um, with me, when I get my dispatcher, dispatch agreement from my carrier, I keep it and until I'm booking a load. When I book the load or they're ready to book or they say, yeah, I want that load, then I try to do all the stuff that you ask, you know, for us to send the information as far as the shipper, the carrier, and the rate with the dispatch agreement to you all at one time. Is that fine? That's fine. I mean, if that's what you want to do, I mean, that's fine. Okay, that's all I that's all I was asking because that's what I've been doing. I've been holding my dispatch yeah. agreement. Uh, Tasha Tarasha asked, uh, so dispatchers usually just deal with dispatching agreements and rate confirmation sheets. Exactly. It's very easy to set up a dispatcher firm. Okay. I mean, you don't need no insurance. You don't need a DOT number. You don't need an MC number. You know, you, you, you don't need in authority, you don't need a bond. All you need is to be set up legally in your state or city as a business. So be make sure you're straight with your state or a local city or, or, or municipality. Make sure you're set up under their guidelines to be set up as a business. You got the business license up on the wall. You're paying the city and state their little county fees or whatever you're paying them. You've got yourself established as an LLC or uh, or you know. Whatever you, need, whatever you want to get established as, you got your tax ID number, it, just make sure you're straight that way. So that's all you need to, to, to be a dispatch because the carrier is assuming all the liability and the responsibility. Okay? And you're basically just an independent contractor who will, who will, who will contract with the carrier and the carrier is paying you to do a service 
for them, and that's finding them loads and keep them moving. And you can build a dispatch firm just as big as you can build a brokerage firm. I'm telling you, personally, I know some dispatch firms that are making $2 million a year. And when I say dispatch firm, I'm talking about just somebody I know who has 30 to 40 dispatch agents that's working with them, and they're splitting the dispatch fee with them. And each one of the agents is booking about five loads per day. And they're collecting what? 50% of the what? The, the dispatch fee. They're collecting 5% of the load fee. The agents are collecting 5% of the load fee. If you got somebody who's booking five loads a day and they're and, and they're booking for five different if they're booking let's put it this way, if you've got someone who has five carriers that they're finding loads for, okay? And each carrier can run on average three loads per week. Okay? And the average load fee is two thousand dollars. That's a hundred dollars for you and a hundred dollars um, for them. So you're looking at five carriers, that's a hundred dollars for each carrier. Three runs a day, that's $1,500 per week that they're making and $1,500 a week that they're making for you. If you got 10 people that's doing that and you're collecting $1,500 a week from all 10 of them, do the math. Just do the math. The more agents you add, the more money you're making. People always ask us, are we making any money? We have other training groups, uh, you know, trainers, Freight broker trainers that call us up all the time and say, you all can't possibly be making money. You only charge $2, uh, $299 for your, um, your enrollment fee. How are you making money? Well, they don't understand that we don't make real money until you all book freight. Right? That's what we make. That's what we would make real money. Now, if we get each one of you all, right now we have 57 agents who that are active, students that are active in our program, if each one of you all gets to the point to where you're booking what one load a day, I mean, really, if, yeah, <laughs> on one load a week, and if you're averaging a hundred dollars and we're averaging a hundred dollars, and fifty-seven of you all are booking a load one load a week, mm, what's that? That's fifty-seven times a hundred. Well, that's just one load a week. It adds up, people. And this is what we want you all to see. In building your, when you build your firm, when you build, that's why we always preach stay independent. Actually, I really don't want any of you to go work for another broker's firm. I don't want you to stay with us. I want you all to become independent and build your own dispatching firm or build your own broker's firm or be your own freight forwarding firm. Because that's, that's where it's at. Become your own business owner. Be your own boss. That's exactly right, um, Tarasha. Be your own boss. And that's what this is all about, showing you all how to take control of your own money, take control of your own destiny, take control of, of your own business, and be your own boss and be your own business. I mean, don't go to a brokerage firm and give them 30% uh, of money you're already earning. I mean, come on. That don't sound like the pimp game to you? I mean, a pimp rides around on a flashy car, flashy ring, flashy clothes. He sees a young lady out there, and she's looking good and whatever. He goes over to her and says, hey, girl, let me tell you something. You know, you got it going on. You're looking good. You know, you know, you know, you're doing good. You know, you're making money. You got it going on. But I can make you better. Ride with me. Give me your money, and I'll break you off something, and I'm going to make you better. Does that make sense to anybody? That makes no sense whatsoever. None whatsoever. That makes no sense whatsoever. So don't fall for it. Stay independent. Build your own firm. If you got to start off as a dispatcher, start off as a dispatcher, build your money, and then take some of that money. If you want to invest and become a broker, then you can do that if that's what you want to do. Okay? All right. Um, hopefully, you all understand right now the basics of how to work this system. Okay? I've shown you all tonight. We've been on here for about two hours now. I've shown you all tonight how to, how to work the system. How to contact your, um, how to contact the trucks and the carriers, and flip them over to a dispatch agreement, and start running loads with them, and and basically just show you how to start making money right away. Okay, but you, but you gotta work the system, people. You got you gotta work. The, if you don't work the system, the system's not gonna work for you. Okay, I tell you all the time, this is not get rich quick. No, if you think that's what it is, stop doing it right now. Go do something else. Okay, dispatching, freight broken, all this stuff, it is great money.
but you got to work it. It's not hard work, but it is work. It is work. I mean, you got to make the phone calls. You got to make the phone calls, and you got to and you got to train yourselves to become better salespeople. If you're not accustomed to talking to people, if you're not accustomed to trying to convince people, get used to it. Because that is how you're going to make more money. Be train yourself to become better salespeople and work this system. Don't half work it. Don't say you're working it, but you're really not working it. Work the system, and the system will work for you. Okay? We've also shown you all how to go and find shippers and how to find brokers. I'm telling you all right now, it's easier for you all to contact brokers and get them to send your loads versus having um, contacting shippers. Now, there are shippers out there that don't work with brokers, so there are some, a lot of shippers out there that are happy just to work with you all as dispatchers. Because a lot of shippers don't like working with brokers. They'll tell you when you call them up. We don't work with brokers. We only work with carriers, direct. Which means you represent what? Carriers, direct. So those shippers will work with you. You just got to call them up, find out which one doesn't. Six in one hand, half a dozen in the next. Uh, Kate just asks, do you need to take a course in order to work with RBBS as a dispatcher? We don't, RBBS does not hire anyone. No, you can't, you, you can't work with us. We don't hire anyone. You hire us to be your consultant. RBBS is a training and consulting platform. Our dispatching firm is purely set up for you all to be able to earn money while you're learning. That is, that is, that's the only reason why we're set up as a dispatcher firm. Okay? We are purely a training and consulting firm. That's who we are. So when you all come on with us, you, you enroll, and we have you to take a a, a um, you take the uh, the basic knowledge quiz because we want to make sure before we throw you into our program, everybody is on the same level. You at least understand the basic knowledge of what it takes to book freight. You know the difference between a freight broker and a household broker. What's a BOL? You know all the basic stuff. What's the what's the devil broker? How to avoid devil broker? That type of stuff. Okay. Um, Tasha says. So when the driver is done, he will send BOLs to brokers through Transflow. Yes and no. When the driver is done, he will send the BOL back to us. Or if you're doing your own thing, whatever case it be, he can just take a picture of it and send it to you. Or he can email it to you. How, how do you want to get it to you? Okay. Or he can send it back to them through Transflow. Or he can send it to them uh, through Transflow. If he's set up with Transflow. Bottom line is, when he gets his money, he owes you 10%. Now, when you all are ready to break out on your own, we'll show you all how to download the, uh, the Square Cash and the, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the Square uh, invoicing software so that you all can be able to send your carriers you, your your electronic invoices by email and by text, and all they have to do is click on it, and they can pay you within a debit or credit card. So that's how we're set up. So we pay you the same way. And so and that's how we get paid. So with our loads that we book, or loads that um, on our invoices that we send over um, to our carriers. Okay. All right. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I uh, appreciate you all. Uh, like I said, uh, I, I, I apologize for the technical difficulties we had uh, Saturday in, in, in trying to do this from the other hotel, but we were able to do, have, a, have, have a really good session uh, tonight. And a, a lot of people on here, a lot of you all are visitors, a lot of you all are guests. If you are a guest and you want to take part in our actual training and showing you how to make money and showing you how to actually do this on a regular basis, you need to enroll. Go ahead and to enroll, you're going to go to any one of our videos on YouTube or just call us up and we can walk you through the process and get you enrolled. Enrollment is $299.95 and that is the only investment you will ever pay to us out of your pocket. Everything else we earn in a joint split commission agreement with you where we get half of the dispatch agreement 
fee and you get half of the dispatch agreement fee, which is 10%. So you get 5% of the load fee and we get 5% of the load fee from the carrier when the carrier pays us. And that is how you earn money while you're learning. And we'll walk you through this program and guide you and hold your hand and show you everything you need to know about this business until you're ready to do it on your own. Um, yeah, Carson, you can start calling drivers tonight if you have your access to the low board. Uh, if you are new and you don't have your access to low boards, give us until tomorrow. We will get everything over to you, and you will be completely set up and ready to go by tomorrow. But I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all. Mr. Worley, your packages are on the way. Uh, like I said, you had to go through this first tonight, and then after the, the first day of training, then we'll get you all your, your setup packages. And that will be coming to you all by tomorrow. So thank you all again. I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, this is Calvin with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center. Um, and our next training is not until Saturday. We will not have training on tomorrow. We have training every Saturday. Uh, so, so we'll get that out to y'all. Y'all have a great night. Appreciate y'all. And Saturday, we'll have our regular scheduled training on Saturday. Same back channel, same back time. Good night, everybody.